No. All right. Here we go. Hello, everyone. It's Dread Pirate again. With me is Starkiller Josh, and I just want to let you know, Josh, that I, I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. Whatever I want. Do it, Josh. Do it. Laser my tits. Laser my fucking tits, Josh. Do it. <laughs> Today we're talking about the. Hello. Boys. <laughs> Hello, uh, yes, I'm Starkiller Josh, uh, Dread Pirate with me, and that was a terrible rendition of him being Homelander. Do it! <laughs> From that, uh, we are essentially talking about The Boys Season 1 and 2, yeah. because my boy finally watched the show. It was so I've good! Been, I've been telling him to see it for a long time, oh so God. that's the reason why it's so late in... Talking about this because I know the planet is talking about this. What, what else has Garth and... Ennis written? Because I'm just I know I'm just gonna see Carl Urban in it. Is Carl Urban gonna be the new Punisher, or is he just gonna be in the background, just like cursing and smoking? Because he'll be he's Garth Ennis' surrogate. I don't fucking superheroes wankers. It's just if, if they bring if they bring back if 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 Marvel brings back Punisher uh, to the MCU, uh, I don't think it's gonna be Carl Urban for one. A lot of people, myself included, would want to see John Murphal back. Right. Um, so, because we want to, I want to, the the, 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 the actors who are in the Netflix shows need to come back. Yeah. They were but fine. It, and. But it is law. Law of Paylor, the sun god himself, that if a, if a Garth Ennis adaptation exists, then Carl Urban will be in it and Seth Rogen will be producing it. This is law. What? This is, I'll the tell way. You this is the way, Josh. I'll tell you what I want I Carl Urban it. in. I want to see... I, I don't care if this is never happening. I really don't care if this is never happening. But I personally want to see Carl Urban again as Dread. I want to Dread too. I don't care that you weren't doing it as much as I was. Yes, I still, you like it. It I still dug it. I just... Look, look, I just don't... Not like me. I love... Listen, listen. I love... Listen, it, the Nostalgia Critic and I had a disagreement about... Sylvester Stallone, and, you and, and I was all like, that movie sucks, and I was all like, your whole channel sucks. And and that's all that was all about. Look, I, that's, I'm not really a fan of that movie either. Like, I liked it as a kid, but the more I grew up, I didn't care for that film. And when I didn't discover where the comic was, the roots of the comic, then I really didn't like that film. Then you introduced me to nostalgia, whatever, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then... I'm throwing that in my face. <laughs> I want to. I'm going to, take, I'm going to take this big chunk of monkey poop and just smear it all over you. Huh. And so, <clears throat> that aside. Remember so for I, me, remember when I really liked Doug? Remember when Doug like was was for the dark times, for yes. Mashad, <laughs> before oh. the Empire. Um, Back when I thought he yeah. had a conscience. <laughs> but but you know what? Let's, let's not go there. The point is. Yeah, let's, um, we're changing I, the topic of the show mid like okay. The topic is about how the Sylvester Stallone Judge Red is awesome and how gay Josh is and how much Josh sucks. That's what we're talking about. Okay, Josh, you suck, you're wrong about everything. The ABC War War was dope, and uh, Armando Sante was Rico, and, and he betrayed the law! Yeah! <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it has it has this, there's movie. a charm about it. Yeah. There's a charm about it that I love that makes me laugh. Yeah. But Here's the thing. They're my both issues good. with that film. Let, let, no, no, no. My issues. Yeah. Hold on. My issues with that film are not about because the film to me is a serviceable, cheesy, but also really cool Sylvester Stallone '90s action movie. Right. Yeah, that's the half set, of me that's set okay with that. Set in the 2000 AD universe. Yeah. For me, that that's for me that's what I'm okay with. And when I saw that movie the first time, and for years after. That's all I thought about. I honestly, yeah. I had no idea about the comic source material. Yeah. So as years went on and I discovered it and realized how much the comic source material was more appealing to me and how it gets straight from it, I was like, oh, no, I don't want this. I want something like the comic. Now. I feel like and... Mr. Stallone is a good gateway drug to the comics. It was like, <laughs> you know, hey, it's, it's, it's in the future and it's post-apocalypse. It's all weird. Check it out. It's and it's like, you know. Yeah, it's it's a. I think it's a it's a good gateway drug, the same way any bad comic book movie can be, because you're wondering, okay, so if this is bad, how what is it done right now? Oh, it's kind Tell of like a black inspired me. For example, yeah, go ahead. for example, um, was it 1990s Captain America? 
Um, okay. That, okay. Uh, all right. All right. I, I was just watching that best of the worst episode <laughs> it was like today. Uh, okay. So the first God. one, I, I think it was the '80s or possibly the '70s. Red Brown, Red Brown, Strike yes, Commando. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, uh, Space Mutiny, Spoonie fan. Yeah. Red Brown was the first Captain America, and his second villain was Christopher Lee. Um, yes. Who was had like a Hispanic name, but he was just it was Christopher oh. Lee. Villain Christopher Lee. You know what I just learned? Yeah. What? I just learned that because remember we were talking um some time ago we talked about uh Shang Chi and the and the Legend of Ten Rings right. and about how in the comic he originally his dad was uh Fu Manchu right. and then you got all into that, Oh, I wanna know the history of Fu Manchu. Yeah. I just learned that along the history of Fu Manchu in cinema, yeah. One at one point Christopher Lee played Fu Manchu. I am not surprised by this at all, but I think it's awesome. No, neither am I. And I saw, and I saw the picture, and I was like, "That is both pretty good makeup, and at the same time, it's Christopher Lee." And I'm like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" Of course, Christopher <laughs> Lee played Fu Manchu. Of course, he did. It's the ultimate, <laughs> act, ultimate actor who plays villains. You know. Yes, he played evil Chinese warlock. <laughs> I want to team. I want to team up now with Dracula and Fu Manchu. I want it. I want it. And, and, and the one and the person who stops them, Ansem the Wise. Yeah, Ansem yes, the Wise, Saruman. <laughs> um, but okay. Then there's the the '90s Captain America, which you're referring. That one stars yeah. J.D. Salinger's kid. Yes. Who was like an actor who also was one of the bullies <laughs> in Revenge of the Nerds, and then. He did Captain America, was it, and much on. like J.D. Salinger, he just disappeared. <laughs> was his name Mark? Was it Mark Salinger? I think it was Mark Salinger, yeah. I want to say Mark. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is that that movie is bad. Yeah. Um, and I, so, I, but if I you just saw spot, that... I have a soft spot for both those movies. For uh, Three, that's I, the thing. Red Brown was in two of them. Red Brown was yes, in two was. of them. <laughs> no, the, the, Red, the Red Brown Captain Americas, I actually kind of like. I like I like them in a... In a Okay, I don't like them as much as the Adam West Batman TV show, but yeah. I feel like they belong somewhere in that same pocket Red, for me. Red Brown has this charisma about him. He has this energy yeah. that he brings to however, everything, which works. Aside from however, the death, the death yells, yeah! Aside from that, he's got this great energy okay. to him, so yeah. However, the, the 90, 1990 Captain America movie, you have to understand that I grew up with that movie. Yeah. Like, like early, before... I lived near a blockbuster. I'm talking about like that mom and pop video store right. days. And I rented it uh, when I still lived in New York as a kid. And I was excited because I uh, comic books. And, he, and I, mean, I, wanna see, I always want to see movies and stuff that I grew up with. Yeah. Oh my God, I was so disappointed. I hated that movie. That was one of the, that was one of the like, insults of my childhood. Yeah. So like, I have nostalgia, but like negative nostalgia towards that film. It's not... It, okay, so the problem with that movie is it's. I guess we're not talking about the voice. We're talking about the JD Salinger. Uh, no, no, we're talking about the voice, bro. We're talking about the voice. Just the, hold the, on. The, yeah. Um, the, 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 okay, so that movie it's not terrible. It, it's def, It's a okay. It's a bad movie. It's it's a B movie. It's cheesy. Um, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's fun. If like you put it on, I'll watch it. it it's it's like it's. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like um, this is not. I don't think this is going to come across as a compliment, but I feel like uh, Mark Salinger's Captain America kind of reminds me of. Toby Maguire's Spider-Man to some degree. Let me explain. Um, Toby's definitely better as Spider-Man than he is as Captain America, but I, I kind of like that he's kind of like a quiet, soft-spoken, sort of just nice guy who's just kind of quiet and kind of shy. And he's just, but he's he's just trying to do the right thing. I feel like that he he has that kind of energy in the role, and it, it's like a soft-spoken performance. Shut up, Josh. Just shut up. Shut up your face. Um, you know, it, it's an okay, you know, cheesy. It, okay, it, it, I'm gonna say what Jay Bauman said. It feels like a Roger Corman movie more than the Fantastic Four Roger Corman movie feels like it. And and that one and the Fantastic Four Roger Corman movie is actually better than it. It's more entertaining because of how ridiculous. That's memorable. Yeah. And I think the real problem with like um, the J, the Mark Salinger Captain America is it's yeah. it, it's kind of a boring film. It's just kind of meh. You know, uh, but it's kind of cute. I got a, I got a little charm. It, 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 it's got a charm to it. It's nothing compared to the MCU. It's nothing compared to Chris Pine's but that's, Captain America. But, 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 you know. No, no, no. Yeah, but see, okay. 
in many ways, it's not going to be anywhere near, you know, compared near to it. Yeah. But it, but there's one particular point about that comparison that matters to me yeah. is the fact that the reason, well, it's not the only reason, but one of the major reasons as a fan mm. why the MCU cap is better yeah. is because it really honored the source material more right. and tried to do something with it and not in a, just, it wasn't cheesy. It's like right. the other one, the other one butchered the source material so much that it's, it's almost not recognizable from the Red Skull to even cap. The way Captain America acts, yeah, he is he is both a pussy and a jerk. His greatest and superpower is pretending that he's sick so he can steal people's cars. I hate I hate <laughs> that. You don't think? No, 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 no. I mean, as a, I understand, like, like from your perspective, I get it because you're starting to feel sick. You, <laughs> again, from your perspective, I understand because yeah. you didn't grow up reading Captain America and liking him, but I fucking did. Yeah. And so when I watched I this... I can feel Ash- your massive disappointment that you must have experienced. Oh, it wasn't just... Ma- no, 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 no. Yeah. To me, the this sound is of Captain America, America is... The- movies. My, my, wait, my wait, personal wait. main is the live-action Resident Evil movies for like how disappointing yeah. they are. This is this is for you. Yeah, but hold on. It's, no, no, no. I have one, I have one. I have one comparable to the Resident Evil hatred, but it's not this movie. But with this movie, I do hate... The with- beloved cartoon show about bending elements. We're not doing that today. <laughs> We're not doing that today. People are upside you, down, Josh. We're not doing that now. No, we're not doing that now. It's a very let me get this, spiritual film. Yeah, right, man. Let me get my point across. Okay, hold on. My I have to have walk away, though. Oh, look at all this earth that's everywhere. <laughs> Alright, for those who don't know, he's referring to M. Night Shyamalan's The Last Airbender. My, that is my number one most hated film. Of, of all time we so far. We were on the phone. I'm sure. We were talking, and he bellowed as loud as possible, there's Earth everywhere, in referring to the Fire Nation prison of the Earthbenders. And it became a, it became a meme amongst my circle of friends. <laughs> we were just, I still to this day, there's Earth everywhere. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, if you don't, if you don't know, I mean, you can go anywhere on the internet and Google the whole prison scene. But the idea of keeping earthbenders in what looks like a mountain field, in a quarry, a farm, they'll never escape. A, okay, yeah, no, <laughs> they'll never escape. It was the point. Okay, the movie was terrible, but it was a, it was it was the point in the film when I I in the felt show in, they were on a fucking oil rig. They had a point. Dude, the, yeah. Sorry, wait, wait, I got this. Okay, I got this. I'm sorry. I'll take a drink. They this this is the point when the movie stopped being just a terrible movie mm-hmm. or a bad adaptation and became downright insulting. Because I, I I I literally threw my popcorn in the air. I'm not kidding. I was I just threw it. I'm like, oh fuck this. Are you really gonna tell me that you expect me <laughs> and the people in this theater who gave a hard earned money to believe that in this magical world where people can bend the elements? That earthbenders are going to be so disillusioned and so depressed by the scary firebenders, they won't even try to escape when their weapon is all around them? Josh, the when fire nation was really mean. They are barefooted, so they can touch the earth and be connected with the power. Their source of power. It's right there. There is, there is earth everywhere. <laughs> How do they not escape? It's like giving a bunch of POWs guns. They're out of their cages. There's nothing. Then they go, now don't you try to shoot us. <laughs> what? No. It's like, oh. it's like in Star Trek Voyager, the Kazon prison is just a line you're not supposed to cross. Don't escape. I'm a Kazon. I'm really intimidating. Oh, no. They broke free. How did how did Jakote and, and Paris get a, escape the Kazon prison? Oh, they punched the guard and walked away. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find my center. Josh, just remember when you feel bad about the last center, just remember the penis hair. Just remember the penis hair. Everything gets better. That's never enough to make me happy, though. <laughs> that, that's stupid. Because that's supposed to make me happy. I had the it, reverse it action. Like, I, I was like, oh my god, this movie's so. It's just like he was talking about this movie's awful. And then that happened, and I just lost my mind. I just started laughing. I just started laughing, and I didn't stop until the movie was over. I was no, like, no, no, no. Pieces in the hair. No, because, a giant cock. no, because 
And that, no, don't get me wrong, that's hilarious. But I couldn't, I, there was no humor left for me. My soul had left. You understand, ladies and gentlemen, when I saw, I, once I got to that point in the film, from that moment onward, all the way through, because that's also the part where a lot of people love to laugh at it. You know, when the six guys do this freaking river dance film. Yeah. Move one goddamn rock about this size, and then another guy has to do this just to throw it, and one dude. Okay, that should have made me laugh too. How pathetic that was. Yeah. But it did nothing. Faze me because the moment he stuck them in that prison, yeah. just the very fact that they go, oh, here we go, lock the key, you'll never get out. I saw red for the rest of the film. There was no color. There was no, no nothing. I just was bleeding out of my eyes of rage. Yeah. Everything was red. That's all, and all I heard was my heartbeat in my ears. Just the whole freaking way through. Just, oh, I was pissed. You know, speaking of Nostalgia uh, Critic, um, the, the, the joint review by Why Ruler Time, Chris Larios, Todd in the Shadows, and Jesu Otaku of The Last Airbender is, I think, a really good review of it. And it's like, your, your hatred... I think is embodied very much in Why Ruler of Time. Nick Freeman, who is, um, yeah, who is, who is, who is a fellow Tampa Knight like myself, who, it, it, like, he's right, he, the entire review, he's like... <laughs> I and, saw that review years, and then, years ago. Chris just comes up to him and like, so who's Goku again? He's like, ah! <laughs> I, I, I see, I've seen that, I've seen that review. That was years ago. Yeah. But the thing is, the thing with the, okay, that movie is now 10 years old, and as a result, and, um, What's it called? Uh, there's like a partnership between Netflix and um, Viacom, like Nickelodeon and stuff. Yeah. So the the last Air, uh, Avatar: The Airbender is on there as long as uh, Legend of Korra. Yeah. And so a whole new group of fans have emerged from streaming this. Yeah. And for those who like, re there's people reliving it, and then they're showing their kids, and there's new people like, oh my god, oh my god. So it boomed last year, yeah. again, yet again. And I discovered three new people who typically review things like books or storytelling or that kind of stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. But they got together, they're all friends, and they they watched The Last Airbender together yeah. as a live stream. Now, w the one out of the three is a huge Avatar fan who saw this, and now he's kind of presenting it to his friends because one of them knows about it but never has seen Avatar but never seen the movie. Mm -hmm. Other one, she was brand new to the franchise. Uh, her her fan people were telling her to get into this, even though she doesn't watch television. Again, she's like an avid book reader. Yeah, she, and she'll watch movies, but she's not really into shows or whatever. Anyway, the point is, <clears throat> she got into the show, yeah. binged it rapidly, fell in love with it, and quickly got invited to this movie thing. And you can see a brand new fan, the joy. Be murdered, viciously stabbed, and just gutted and mauled as the film. And they're going, no, no, hold on. They're going through this step by step. There's pausing, there's talking. It's, you know, you see them with their headphones. There's a screen like this. I was, oh my God. It's beautiful to watch, really. It, it's kind of like the Major from Helsing Ultimate. You know, just like, I love war, I love battles, I love breach cleats. I love genocide. I the, the, mm -hmm. nothing fills me with joy than watching a young soldier stabbing his enemy to death with his bayonet. It just it just it just mm -hmm. ah it just fills you with mm -hmm. that just bile. Just watching something All beautiful right. die. What All are you right. talking about? Um, <laughs> we have talked enough about uh, things we we hate, or at least things I hate. Um, hold on one sec. You cut me off because I really want to finish this point. Yes. And this point was why I don't like the. Uh, the Mark Salinger Captain America is because the Mark Salinger Captain America to me is a precursor to the John Walker of the Falcon and Winter Soldier show. It's the same reason people didn't like him. It's the same reason I didn't like that Captain America. It's like if, if Steve was that dick, that would be the, that was him. That yeah, Did seriously. Really strike me as a dick. Well, yes, he no, dude, he does steal people's cars. That was a dirty dick moves. And then here's the thing: he doesn't get to justify it by saving the day. People keep saving his life. He's pathetic in that movie. I mean, at least John Walker got some moments and murder. That's an interesting you know, analogy. Didn't... That's an interesting analogy for that movie. Is comparing it to John Walker, like um, U.S. Agent. It's like 
That's how I felt. Be, be, because well, it's like, but it like it's like a different type of dickishness. It's really more of kind of like accidental dickishness. It's like he doesn't like I. Well, it, it does make sense with the idea of that scene in Falcon and the Winter Soldier that it's just like, um, you know, the super soldier serum just kind of exemplifies whatever you are, and it's like certain people shouldn't be Captain America. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. Steve Rogers should be, um, uh, Sam Wilson John. should be, maybe even Bucky Barnes, not John Walker, and oh, probably no. not Mark Salinger. Uh, be, because, but it's like, his Captain <laughs> America, it's like, like, definitely Red Brown. Definitely Red Brown. I'll knife fight you on this. Uh, again. Uh, again we'll, we'll West Side Story this out. Uh, again. Uh, Red you will Brown respect was... that stupid motorcycle helmet of his. Red, you will no, hold on, hold on. Red, <laughs> hold on. Red Brown, Red Brown was fine. Yeah. I even like the plastic shield. It's 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 not... Mark Man Muscle. America all the way. Like, you know, the comic representation. Right. That's the best they could do. Like I said, just charm. I mean, at least he's a hero. Right. I'm sorry. He's at least trying. This guy is so bad. Like, that's the problem. What, what, what pissed me off is that I guess I would have been okay if it was Mark Salinger, not Steve Rogers, because well, he's was. playing. It was. That's basically what. I mean, no, that's no, no, no. But he's playing. But he's, like... <laughs> yeah, but his main movie is Steve Rogers. He's supposed to be portraying Steve Rogers. Okay. And um, no one at home is going to get this, but you you will understand this. It's me playing your game as Captain America when I started play- role playing games for the first time. And I didn't know what characterization and personality was. We're not helping your case. <laughs> exactly. It's like my version of the Silver Surfer, except it's like, like, what if I played Captain America like myself? Which is entertaining to see when you run a role-playing game where you have characters that already have, like, a yeah. set personality. And, like, sometimes you'll have people that really get into the role-play. Oh, dude. Oh, man. Wolverine would do, like, you know, like, Captain America would do this. Wolverine would do this. Or, like, you know, my elf has this personality. It's very... People that really get into the role-play and play something that's not them... And then you have people who mm-hmm. don't and just play themselves in every role. And just like, okay, mm-hmm. so let's play this licensed character that's a set personality and have them make mm-hmm. all the decisions that character wouldn't make. And it's just yeah. like, like, I don't know, having Dr. Doom create a bunch of elves to clean this apartment. And, uh, and, 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 yeah, and, but, and other yeah. dumb shit that I did. <laughs> it's like, Again, like you said, it's okay in a, in a, in a role-playing game setting. When it's when it is being presented as a movie or, or you know some film or whatever for other people who don't know this character, you have to understand that at that point in time, you know because this this actually went to theaters. Yeah. At that point in time, this was a way for people to actually be interested in the character, and people did not have interest in that character for many years as a result. When Captain America was being announced with Chris Evans in the role, people were not excited. Because they were thinking of that movie, but they didn't read a comic. They just knew yeah, that movie. I'm not kidding. Fantastic Four movies. And the Dan's hand. Yes, exactly. And of course, Huck, and, and Chris Evans at the time was usually known for more comedic, even in an action setting, the more comedic. Like, no one really saw him as that serious, you know, soldier, hero, Captain America. Yeah. And of course, we know the story. The, the movie blew all the expectations away. It was great. And he stepped up. He stepped, stepped up. And I and again like again I I, I think you uh, one thing that you and I just like to do just for fun is just talk about the various movie incarnations of the Fantastic Four and how bad they are, and uh, I think I think yeah. I've gone on record as saying I I you know I more or less like him as Human Torch. I thought he was like I, I feel like every like acting wise all four of them they pick were great. It's just everything else yeah. is wrong. It's just like they don't know how to use. I mean, Michael Chiklis think... was great as the thing. They just didn't know how to use him. You know, it's like no, I, but I, it's such a I, transformation I, I seeing him become Captain America. Just like it just. Like letting him be serious and letting him like embody the role, it's just it's remarkable to see him as Captain America. Yeah, no, um, no, I, I loved I loved Chris Evans as Johnny Storm, and Michael Chiklis was a great uh, Ben Grimm. Uh, Jessica Alba, I love her, but for being Jessica Alba, not for Miss for the Invisible right. Woman. Uh, I don't think she that was Invisible cool. Powers and, and, and yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like casting, but that's a whole other reason. Oh, look, um, she's naked and she's in her underwear, boobs. Yeah. Because it's Jessica Alba, and that unfortunately was happening to her for a long time in her career, uh, and and she laments that herself. The point is because it's not just those movies; it's like think about it. There's a tons of movies where it's just like well, you yeah. Know, but, I, remember, I remember Cinema Snob used to give her crap for like her her as Nancy Callahan for not being naked. It's just like yeah, okay. Listen, I would have given her props, and I definitely would have been happy to see her naked in, in Sin City. Mm-hmm. Also, um, ratings for movies. 
Probably wouldn't have made it mm-hmm. to theaters if she was if, if if that was the case. Like if you were just, yeah. if you went too far on it. And like if she's not comfortable with it, she's not comfortable with it. It, it what they did in the movie in Sin City with her was fine. It's like I got it. Yes. She's a stripper. She's an exotic dancer, and she looked great and yeah. all. And she didn't have to. She didn't have to, have to flash her boobs. And that mm-hmm. made her happy. They made her comfortable. And she's great as Nancy Callahan. So it's like whatever, you know. All right. Yeah. Enough. This has a lot to do with the boys. So. Let's get, uh, yeah, let's get to the point, because most of this is going to be about the boys, guys. Yes, let's get to so, the point. So, Mark Salinger's is Captain America. One more point. I feel like um, he's... <laughs> um, yeah, no, like, the, but I, I, I'm having trouble getting over your point, because it's like, it's like you know, because John Walker's assholishness is so... No, you really, like, sparked... I was like, wow, that's just... I did! I'm, like, turning I into... Did. I, I'm, I'm, like, turning into Velociraptor just thinking about it. I'm just like, like wow, that's, that's a good point. It's like, because John Walker's dickishness is very abrupt. It's very, like, I am Captain America, do what I say, just kind of, just not able to handle it, not able to print it, losing it. Whereas, like, Mark Salinger's, again, I still enjoy, I enjoy the movie for what it is. He's, he's so quiet and soft-spoken, it's like he never stopped being mild-mannered Steve Rogers. You know? It's like like he never really, it's like, oh yeah, he got the super soldier feel, but really? Because he stays the whole movie, he's just kind of a quiet kind of well-meaning guy who doesn't really know what to do. And that's the problem. Mm-hmm. Captain America should be a tactician. And yeah, the best thing he can come up with is, let me pretend I'm sick so I can steal this guy's car so I can go stop the Red Skull. And I know, and to your credit, to his credit, he does stop the Red Skull by the end of the movie. And you can't deny that, sir. With the help of the president. Good job. Yeah. But... Um, but yeah, it is, it, it's like dickishness, but in a different way. It's kind of, it, it really just feels very derp. It's just like, um, I, I can just imagine, I can imagine Alex doing it in a role-playing game. It's like, okay, so I'm going to pretend to be sick. All right, make a bluff check. All right, he pulls over and pulls the car. I steal his car. What? <laughs> it's like, well, I don't know how, to, how am I supposed to get away? I don't know, something other than that. Well, I, whatever, I stole his car. <laughs> it's like, all right, another game ruined. The boys, let's go on. <laughs> all right. So, <clears throat> um, just to get it, us warmed up and started, um, for those who don't know or do know, um, we mentioned Garth Ennis, a uh, comic book writer. He is the co-creator of the Boys comic, and uh, which was originally published by Wildstorm, but after he and DC had a falling out, especially with Wildstorm being folded completely into the rest of DC, He's like, well, this is my creator own project. I'm taking it and going. And they're like, okay. He takes it, goes to Dynamite Entertainment, which is a comic company I recommend. Has a lot of really good stuff there. And continued The Boys and finished it. Now, that, that story is in the can. And The Boys I feel is... I compelled to do a, a quick like promo for Dynamite Comics. Because I don't think people realize how awesome Dynamite Comics is. Dynamite Comics, we're not being paid. But I have, like Dynamite Comics no. has Vampirella. <laughs> it's got... John Carter of Mars, got Dejah Thoris, it's got Red Sonia, it's got the Conan books, I want to say. Uh, like, it doesn't have, it has Conan, it has Red Sonia, but it doesn't have Conan. Yeah, you, you were, you were right about that. Conan, uh, they did a crossover, yes, but what happened is, uh, I think when they did the crossover, Conan was with Dark Horse at the time. Conan is currently with Marvel Comics again. With Marvel Comics again. Okay, so Conan jumps around. Conan, you know. Yeah, no, Conan, yeah, the rest of Conan jump around. Much I think like it's really funny how... around with anything in a gold bikini. So, you know. I think it's really funny how Conan and Star Wars, their first like comics of them being published were by Marvel. Yeah. Then the rights moved to Dark Horse. Yeah. And are now back with Marvel. I think that's actually funny. Yeah, um, the interesting history of the comics, but it's like, but yeah, they do a lot of great stuff, and uh, I think Nancy Collins works on them regularly. Gail Simone. Um, um, do, they, do they? Okay, are they doing the Evil Dead comics as well, or is that like being still Dark? Yes. They're doing the Army of Dark yeah. stuff is there. Yeah. I got to meet. Oh. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, the comic that uh, we used to know back in high school, uh, also created our own, also used to be part of Wildstorm, was Danger Girl. Yeah. Danger Girl is, in, um, is a, a part of Dynamite Entertainment and did a crossover of Army of Darkness. That nice. Was oh, uh, shit. Oh, Abby Chase is fighting yeah. Deadites now. That was, it was a, it was a old, it's an old crossover, but it was fun to catch up on it. Nice. Um, I mean, it was like. Yeah, uh, please don't, don't crucify me. I want to say someone like 20. 14, 2015, somewhere around there. 
But yeah, but, uh, Danger Girls, Dynamite. Uh, yeah, Nancy Collins. Uh, she was talking. I don't know if she published this or not, but it was like I got. I picked up a copy of Vampirella from her at Pensacon, and I talked with her a little bit. And she was talking about this idea she had for Evil Dead, uh, where she wanted uh, to do the, the post-apocalyptic setting for Evil Dead, where the humans were a, a resistance movement against the Deadites was like was getting Ash to be their their leader reluctantly, but they were also they were working reluctantly with other monsters because Deadites don't play well with other monsters, so they had vampires and wolves and. The humans were all giving up a little bit of their blood to keep the vampires in line, but it was all like a tenuous... They were all like inches from killing each other at any given moment. I was like, man, that sounds really cool. Uh, I don't know if she actually... If she made that comic or not, but that was like she was something she was telling me about. And it was... Uh, uh, I'm personally unaware. I don't, yeah. I don't think so. But yeah, um, she might have not. Yeah, okay, so but like the boys was... Okay, I know Preacher, which you and I are a big fan of, and that's that was my introduction to Garth Dennis, um, which is also a show starring Carl Urban and produced by Seth Rogen, which is really good. Which we'll have to talk out some of the... Yes! Seth Rogen, you told me this! No, Seth Rogen, yes. That's not incorrect, but Carl it doesn't Urban's, start. Carl Urban's Jesse Custer. No, he's not, dude. Isn't he? No, that's just not... the, the faces look the same. Oh. No, 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 no. That is... <laughs> oh, uh, I'm no, recording. Hold on. I'm drawing a blank of the actor's name. But, uh, if... It, it's funny because we just talked about Captain America, uh, the the first Captain America movie. Yeah. You remember Howard Stark? Say it again. Howard Stark. Howard in Stark. Captain America. Oh, um, you mean uh, that, Ashton Kutcher? No, young Howard Stark in Captain America: First Avenger. Okay. That actor is who plays Jesse Custer in Preacher. Wasn't he on that '70s show? No. No, but he wasn't. This entire <laughs> episode is just me looking up on Google, trying to like, like correct myself. No, I can't. Um, I mean, yeah, Google, yeah, I, I can't remember his name. I used to know it too, but no, he was. Um, my brain is yeah. broken. Like, okay, what was he the same? He was. Was he the same guy that played? Um, was he the same guy that was in Braveheart? You know what I'm talking about, like Robert the Bruce. No, no, God, right. no. He's not old enough. Let me help you. In, in, this, in this part <laughs> of the show, Eddie just gets stupid. Uh, <laughs> like, Captain America. Captain America. I'm like, all right. See, now this is sad. We should have done this earlier. Oh, my God. Uh, I, no, this granted, is Granted, I didn't know about <laughs> Preacher. Uh, other versions... Dominic Cooper. His name is Dominic Cooper. God, I can't believe I drew a blank on that. I know that name. What was he in? Yeah, you do. All right, give me a quick second. Dominic Cooper. <clears throat> like I said, he's he's the like the youngest version of Howard Stark in the MCU. So he appeared in him as him, excuse me, in Captain America: First Avenger. He looks but he so also looks like Carl Urban, doesn't he? Look, he looks. He yeah, looks, the hell is so like Especially the best of together. But it's not. It's not him. I'm telling you, it's not him. Um, and, um... I don't, I don't believe this. This is an illusion. But he was, uh, but he also was, he played Howard Stark in the Agent Carter series. Okay? okay. Alright. Then, you won't know this because most of the world didn't watch this movie, but he was a king in the Warcraft film. Yes, he was! Yes! That, that the, like, the Warcraft movie, which everyone hates for no good reason, because it's actually pretty good. I don't hate that movie. It's a decent movie. Everybody's a bunch of fucking I assholes. I swear to God. No, dude, the hate on that movie was fucking retarded. It was like, it's fine. What's wrong with you people? I, it, I mean, it's not, it's not perfect. It's okay. Yeah. But okay, for me, okay, okay, and then, and, and look, if anybody is like a big Warcraft person. Yeah. They can they can talk all the shit they want to me because I I've, I've never yeah. played the game per se. I'm like I've watched I've like looked over people's shoulder yeah. playing the game. I play the games. I just um, don't know all the lore. So I mean you know. So so the thing is yeah I know the little bits and pieces from several friends throughout my college years and stuff. Like I hear this story and that story. Anyway I like it and and what I've seen like online with like uh uh seen the cutscene sometimes or whatever. But the thing is from what I know. World of Warcraft, and that movie, I was like, that's actually a pretty decent representation. Yeah. Yes, I have a world or whatever, but I was like, have you seen other video game movies? This wasn't that bad. Guy. Yeah, they actually, like, gave a shit, and, like, <laughs> the worst thing about that movie is, like, the dwarves and the blood elves, because, like, they made the dwarves yeah. 
and the Blood Elf CGI when it's like, why didn't you just hire... Why didn't you just do what Peter Jackson did and had, like, a short dude? Why, why didn't you... Or camera Why didn't you steal... No, why didn't you steal people off of the Hobbit? Yeah! Steal we people don't off the Hobbit... Or the Blood Elves, the, they could have the, the Blood Elves, like like the Elves, they could have done like makeup effect, like like the, the, it, it, it was it was it was obvious CGI that looked like a cartoon, and it was like that was the worst part. It was like the orcs yeah. are really big and and have to are bulky. It's like okay, I get CGIing them, but even them, they looked like they were real and they were physical in that world. The Blood Elves and the Dwarves stood out as like, and I'm a cartoon character, and so like yeah, just fucking get just fucking get John Rhys Davies to play Gimli again. Boom, dwarf, you're done. You know, get like, you know, like, you know, get one of the ladies from Guardians of the Galaxy, one of the pink ladies. Wow. And that's I don't know. It's like, that would have been a much better job. Uh, but other than that, it was like, yeah, it's a movie. Everybody hate, like, people hated that movie for no fucking good reason. It was like, ridiculous. I love that movie. It's- we back it again. Uh, all because we, we, you yeah. and me, could not figure out uh, Dominic Cooper's name uh, or filmography. Yeah. Um, but there's other stuff. There's other stuff you may or may not see. I think in. he's secretly it's Carl Urban. He's just, he's just, it's Carl Urban has the leading a double life. I think that's what's really happening. But, but you know what? Actually, it would be kind of cool. I don't think I've seen a movie with the two of them together. That would be dope. Just, that, would I don't confuse, care that would confuse the shit out of me. That would confuse <laughs> the shit out of me. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, because for what? you, you'd be, like, you'd be like, Carl Urban starring with Carl Urban. <laughs> no. It's like um, it's like it's, it's like um, hologram man, where like the villain and the main guy look the same. They're both like muscular dudes with long hair, like punching each other. It's like who's the ho- and they both become hologram man. So it's like who's the holog, which one's the hologram man? I don't know. Ah! <laughs> All right, so now um, back to back to the boys. Yeah. Um, in the comic, the boys are supposed to be like the CIA group. That it was meant to, uh, it's under wraps, like it's very hush hush, um, you know, black ops. That's supposed to clean up the messes that the supers kind of get into. Mm-hmm. But things go awry, and the show, the show does kind of change it because at first they kind of have orders, but then they 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 skew away from it. Whereas in the show, Carl Urban's character, uh, Billy the Butcher, um, is more like a fallen person. Of what's happened in his personal life between him, his wife, and Homelander, and everything, yeah. and so he's got this whole Captain Ahab vengeance quest, right? Yeah. Uh, where that does it does happen in the comic. Don't get it. Don't get it wrong. It does. It's yeah. just you start to see like their forces like oh we're following rules, and then it's like we're not following rules because like um, one of the major changes is um, Huey, character Huey. Yeah. He was already a, he was like already a part of the team when you start the comic. Yeah. Here until we are he's our um, he's the audience surrogate. He's the audience surrogate. And, yeah, and we get him we get him introduced into the into the team, whatever. Yeah. But there's a lot of similarities. Um, the the comic, from what I gather, though, is I mean, it's a dark fantasy comic, guys. It's very violent and full of dark humor and. Controversial things, uh, but it also is saying something. In other words, it's awesome. It is. It is awesome. But that's kind of what I like about it is because the thing is, the thing about that Venice though is that like, on the surface you think it's just shock for shock. Like he's not trying to tell any story. He's just trying to mess with you. And with every Garth Venice story I have ever written, read, that's all. Oh, it's secretly story. Garth Ennis. I knew oh, you were British. Well, <laughs> no, well, you know, he's, not, he's not British. He's um, is he Scottish, Irish? I think he's Irish. Um, From the but no, no, I, but, I, I, no, I'm gonna get, I'm, not, I'm gonna get beat up in a pub. I have, I have met him though. Yeah. Yeah, when I was uh, 16 in Orlando, Orlando Medicon. Nice. I went there. I saw him. Um, at the time, you remember this? That he was writing for Marvel. He was writing the Punisher comics, right? Right. Yeah. So I have two of those issues signed, and one of them actually he signed it directly to me. It says to Josh, cheers, Scott Venice. Yeah. Um, it's in here somewhere in the room. It might take a minute to go grab it, so that's the reason I'm not doing it. But no, no, no. I actually, I, I, I actually was able to talk to him for a few minutes. Really nice guy. Yeah. Talks. You wouldn't believe he writes the craziness he writes. Yeah. Um, he seems like an introvert. That's a funny thing. And then 
he but he had to stop with him and a couple other uh comic vets had like this q a panel that i sat down and, and watched it was really him and mark way yeah. and george Perez, a couple others but it was the oh and and Stan Lee. because that was the same convention i actually met stan lee in person now stan lee uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, like, I met him, and I couldn't, I could barely agree. Yeah, you were just like, oh, hi, <laughs> and you were, you, you, you were telling me the story, but you were just kind of like, ha, ah, ah. you, you, You're you, and he's like, I am, and I'm like, <laughs> um, and I do have a picture of him, I have a picture of Dark Venice as well. Yeah. Um, That's basically how that, I was with that, Timothy Zahn, it was like, you're yeah. the guy that made Thrawn, I did, you want the book, it's just like, I do want the book. <laughs> 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 no, I would totally, I would, I would gush over meeting him too. But I mean, Stanley is like tops all of that. Like that's the thing too, because yeah, because it was great to meet. Because at the, I mean, that day I met so many me, people. Look, Josh, oh. look, Josh, you gotta make me a promise. You gotta make me a promise. Mm -hmm. When we invariably create time travel technology as a human species, you and I mm -hmm. are gonna take a time machine and we're gonna mm -hmm. go back. We go back in time. And we're gonna meet Stanley, like shortly after Young you met him. And we're gonna need a paradox to find, like 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 thing from Doctor Who to make sure we don't screw up the timeline. We're, we'll do it, but I wanna I wanna meet Stanley because because I didn't get a chance to meet him and I always wanted to. And then we're gonna go we're gonna go meet Dio too. We're gonna go back in time. We're gonna go to a Dio concert. We're meeting Dio. We're meeting Dio. We're gonna party with Dio. You'll get me to eat a pot brownie at that point if I get to meet Dio. It's like, I'll I'll do it for Dio. Okay. So here's the thing. Um... For anyone who has never seen the show, yeah. I personally highly recommend it. It is it is for adults. It's for adults who love comic book stuff because it really plays it plays on what you think you know about superhero, mm -hmm. the genre, and stuff, and really says, "Nah, look at it this from this angle." And um, highly recommend it. It's going to be spoilerific from here. And me personally, mm -hmm. I actually want to hear uh, Dread Pirates. Uh, opinions. I want to get his input. I want to hear things about the seven, uh, and I want to hear things about the boys themselves. So we have to do like an interview. What you, so what do you think about the show, Ed? It was so fucking good. It was so good. Like, <laughs> dude, like I was like, okay, I've been digging Wandavision. I've been doing Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but like I couldn't like. This was just so insane, and it's like like each episode is like really like long. It's like an hour long, so it's like it was like I was watching a big long movie, and. Mm -hmm. So, um, I really like Garth Ennis. I want to say it was, you got me into Garth Ennis when we were reading him in high school and we were reading Preacher, um, mm -hmm. and like Wizard Magazine, oh, Wizard Magazine was blowing him up all the time. Um, and I want to yeah. say my history with the boys is, is follows. It came out, you showed me a couple of issues. We read a couple of issues at your place and you told me about it. So like I saw, you were telling me about like what happened to, um, uh, Starbright and, uh, like, I remember, like, so, really, like the scenes where yeah, Starlight, where she was like, they're trying to put her in the hoe outfit, and she's like, and she's like arguing with him about, I don't want to, I want to wear this, and I was like, and I was like, oh, and it was, it was like, okay, this is like a deconstruction of superheroes. This is kind of cool. Yeah. And then I, then I forgot about it for a while, and then, um, and then Linkara brought it up one day, and uh, because Linkara, because Linkara all like, I don't like when superheroes are are portrayed as assholes. I, I think heroes should be heroes because you know, Linkara, that's. I love you, Lewis. It's just it's just who he is. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. And then I forgot about it again. And then um, and then the show came out. And then you're like, and you're like, 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 like. I remember. I think Red Letter Media did a review of it. And I was like, wait, the boys, the Garth Ennis book where the heroes are assholes. That's a show mm -hmm. now. Holy mm -hmm. shit, that's cool. Yeah. So it's like so. It was it was always I, I read I remember reading like some of the earlier stuff with it. I I want to say. We read the death of Homelander, like the like the climax of the book together. Like I rem I, I vaguely remember you like like showing me like the like the final issue of like the, the climax with it, um, where where there's no. some spoilery stuff about. I don't know. If, like, I, I I I vaguely remember like 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 going over like the. the well, climax. It wasn't it wasn't that long because I don't I don't actually own that issue, so I don't, it can't be that. Maybe it was Andy. <laughs> Maybe Andy was showing me that. I'm not sure, but it was it was like like someone was showing it to me. I was like, oh man, this is awesome. And like I didn't, I mean, you know me, I don't read enough. I'm I'm bad. But like I read, I read enough that I was like, yeah, this is cool. And it was like I want to, you know, I want to, I want to read this at some point, just like mm -hmm. get into it further. Um. So, but I, I kind of went in. Um. 
knowing what to expect. Uh, at least a little bit. And and this is the thing. This is the thing about me. I always say to people, "Is like, hey, look, I'm immune to spoilers." Because you could tell me Snape kills Dumbledore all fucking day, and like, oh, okay, and it, it, it has no effect. It's like, no, you ruined it for me. You ruined it, and it doesn't ruin it for me because first of all, I don't give a fuck about Harry Potter. Second of all, it's because it's not the same as actually watching it. When I actually watch Snape kill Dumbledore, you could tell me all day long in excruciating detail how it happens. When I actually watch it in the theater, it's like it's like I'm watching it for the first time. And it, it just, it affects me. It was like, I, I spoiled Stephen King's It for myself. It wasn't the same as actually, like, going through and reading it. It was it was still, like, I, I could have all the spoilers about, like, the turtle and this, that, the other. It's like, actually reading through that climax of that book was like, whoa. It, it always, it always works for me. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, just, it was, it was, it was really, um, it was, I was digging it from the moment it started. But it was, like, I think, right the moment when Robin gets killed. It's just, it's just so fucked up. It's like they're having a nice day. They're gonna go have lunch. She kisses her, and they're talking, and then she's yeah. gone, and then slow mo, and then the wind hits him, and then there's the blood, and and she's fucking atomized. She's it's fucking it's the way atomized, they, and he's holding her hand. The they, yeah. The way the way they do it in the show, how it's piece by piece by piece. Yeah. Just I mean, because essentially I. I I, I, I mean, I know that the comic was doing its best, but it's also kind of hard because it's panels. Right. And everything, everything is still... Mo- so you're not really sure if it's meant to be a slowdown moment. Right. Or just whatever. Where here, you can take control of it and really show, no, no, we're going to try to like slow it down so you really understand what just happened. That he's holding his girlfriend, you know, they're holding hands, and freaking Ancient had just gone right through her. Yeah. Super sonic, you know, flash level speeds, and she's exploded so that you can see that every. I mean, God, you know. And then the line, one of her molars got stuck, like went down my throat. You know, which he says laughing about later on, and like they're laughing. They're, they, this guy murdered her, and he's laughing. Yeah, that was jacked up. Yeah. Hey, uh, not to sidetrack you too much, but just to let you know, if you could remember the comic. Remember the um, Huey is very different look. Right? Yeah. So okay, another, another, look? another another issue I remember reading, um, and and then I, when it came to life was hilarious was um, uh, the whale. Like like I I distinctly remember them like 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 you know ranning the whale and it's like where's Huey and there he is he's just sitting there just covered in goop and it's like Huey are you okay it's like oh yeah I'm fine. And it's like, well, well, we got to come. No, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to hang out here for a little bit. You know, just... <laughs> yeah, he's so think... good. Yeah, uh... <laughs> no, but, but Huey, um, originally Derek Robinson, who was the artist on the book all the way through, um, the inspiration for Huey was Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg, who's in the, in the show. Yeah. Which, well, that's exactly why. Because yeah. originally the show had been in development for some time, and Simon Pegg was going to be there, but he was getting too old to play that age for Huey. Yeah. So they said, hey, would you mind being his dad? Yeah. And he, of course, he was like, yeah, Simon I love Pegg, the comic. Simon Pegg, King of the Nerds, is all like, I'm in. Fuck yeah. Yeah, no, but he was already a fan of the comic, and he yeah. kind of wanted, he knew about his face being used, and kind of was like, oh, I'm going to be this, but didn't know when the, you know, project would ever be made. Yeah. And so, just to be, is like, look, just to be in the show is, is joy for me. So I was like, yeah. I just wanted to bring it up for those who don't know. That was a really cool fun fact. Because yeah. I knew that boy right now. I saw Simon. I didn't expect to see Simon Pegg in it. Once I saw yeah. him, the guy with Yeah, it, he cast. was a nice little surprise. It was like when he said, to, oh, Simon Pegg, yeah. hey, what's up? And it was. I thought he was like the friend at first. And then it was, yeah. it was like he called him dad. And he's like, oh, he's his dad. Um, no, and, dad. Um, oh, nice nod, though. Nice nod in the window. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but, then, but then like he didn't go away. I thought he was just going to be like a cameo. And it's like, no, he's in, he's in a good a ch- chunk of season one. And it's just like he's he's there for yeah he gets to really you get to really it's like you got to really like his dad you but and, and he's not perfect because he's like what what's interesting um, is yeah, again sure. like his his attitude is just complacency but what's what's terrible about it is that it's like this is a world where superheroes basically can just do whatever they want and no one can do anything about it so he's really just like listen son I know your girlfriend was horribly murdered by this superhero who doesn't give a fuck but. Just let it go. There's nothing we can do about it. And it's just like yeah, because, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's just like that's like he's just he's just there. Why 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 fight back? You know. And one and, of the things. That, yeah. 
Yeah, one of the things that's very universal about the show is that it essentially is using superheroes and portraying them in two ways. One, uh, as Hollywood celebrities, yeah, who, who who can at times let the celebrity get the better of them, right? And they do things that excess. We know those stories of not everyone does it, but we know the ones who've done it, especially in the many years ago. And that's he it's being uh, shown in these individuals, but also it's about um, corporations, yeah, running running wild without with little to no regulation, right? And imagine those two things. Use. What if you had a corporate? Because sometimes corporations do that. Yeah. You know, there's there's chemical waste in your water, drinking water, or certain accidents happen that can cause the death or accidents of a loved one. They lose uh, limbs or whatever, and they'll give they'll come down with their lawyers with settlements and platitudes and all this stuff. But at the other day, they don't care. Yeah. They just want to make sure you don't say anything and then move on. Imagine it's being done with people justice league level. Yeah. Basically, God so walking amongst us. So, in the world, we, in the natural world we live in, there's that over that huge shadow because corporations almost have more power than the government itself. Yeah. Then, then you have people who can fry you with their eyes. Yeah. Or run through you at nine hundred miles. Homelander really likes to fry people with his eyes. <laughs> yes. And it's like, but and then everything that these people with these, you know, Greek mythological powers. They get away with it because of again the the, the, the monolith that controls everything. It's like yeah. that's scary as shit. Yeah, it, it's like they really are the villains of this show. I mean, it's not. It, it's like, yeah. and, and this is where I feel like I have to stop a minute and let's talk a little bit more about Garth Ennis personally because I remember growing up reading him, and the thing about it comes through Garth Ennis all the time is he's he fucking hates superheroes. He just does, and it's just like it's so yeah, it's so interesting to be a comic book fan. And to love superheroes, and and to and to and to you know and really Linkara's point you know that these should be like Linkara really likes DC Comics, and I get why he likes these. Well, I think you and I are more Marvel, but like yeah. the, the DC Comics heroes are characters you look up to. They're 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 mm-hmm. the role models, and it's like and it's like yeah. what makes Superman great is that he's a good person. With <laughs> Superman's better, it's a good person. Who uh, who has these who need these wonderful things? Batman is a good person who's like like realizes potential and is using it for a good cause. Mm-hmm. Um, and whereas the Marvel characters, the Marvel characters are more relatable. They have problems. They have issues. Um, and yeah. it's not that you can't have people with superpowers that are are bad. It's just they're typically villains. It's just they typically go they typically rob a bank or. Demand equal rights by blowing up the people that are going to use the Sentinel program against them, Mag- like Magneto. It's like these all yeah. these issues of power and whatnot get explored. But it's like it's like it was. It's really the thing is the thing. I'm, I, I, I get with Garth Ennis. It's just it's not his thing, and I think he sees a lot of he. It's like he's, you point out he sees it from a different angle, and it's not his thing. But I just I really love having a guy like Garth Ennis in the comic book industry, which is so superhero dominant. And even though I love superheroes himself myself. I love the fact that there's a guy out there who is like, no, they suck. And here's why they suck. And it's like, because he's such a good writer, he can explore it from a different angle. And like, anything he touches. And it's like, it was... It, it, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of um, Uncanny Avengers when Red Skull um, got Xavier's brain. And it makes you appreciate how good a person Professor Xavier was. It's like, Xavier could mind control the entire world um, and yet he was loath to use that power he, he was very powerful but he almost he never used it on that level because he didn't want to hurt people he cared about people he wanted to change their minds the right way and you give that same power to a piece of shit Nazi like the Red Skull and you watch what he does with it as he just he goes into down in, into Times Square and just mind controls everybody into a riot and has them just start murdering each other and murdering mutants and just like drinking getting off on it and it's just like, and it's like, okay, imagine Superman as an asshole. Imagine Superman who gives no fucks, who is a sociopath weirdo who drinks breast milk. By the way, yeah. Well, I'm, but that's why I wanted. That's why I wanted to talk about like, yeah. each character. Yeah. But but yeah, Hol- <laughs> Homelander is fucking terrifying. He's fucking terrifying. He's like yeah. He, he's Superman, but evil and crazy. 
And it's it, it's like, and what can you do? He's a great villain because what are you gonna do? Like like you're yeah. gonna like like Superman's real weakness is not really Kryptonite or magic. It's his it's his heart. It's his it's those he cares about. Well, Homelander, it's, it's, he... it's his heart too, but it's his fucking ego, and like and 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 wanting everybody to love him. Um, but it's just like yeah, it's like what do you do to this guy? Like everybody is so terrible. Maeve, Queen Maeve, who's like can handle herself and has superpowers, she's yeah. terrified of him. And like it's like the point where she's um, you know she's trying to hide her girlfriend's existence from him because she's afraid he's gonna kill her. Um, Starlight, when he starts threatening Starlight, things get really like 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 things are already bad for her, but like it gets worse. It's like and what are you gonna what are you gonna do about this? And it really makes Butcher shine so so much. It's like what's great about the boys. It's it's really it's about these gods among us who can get away with anything and are really horrible monsters. But the but like you got ordinary people who are basically spies. Who are giving it to them, and it's just like, and but like they have a real like obstacle against them because the mass majority of them don't have superpowers, and the ones that they have that have superpowers they don't 100 percent trust. Like you know, Butcher keeps giving Star like crap. They didn't trust um, the female of the species when she first joined up. Um, but it's, but it's worse than that. It's like yeah. it, it it is. I mean, this is the kind of it's it's the perfect underdog story. Right. This is basically. I mean. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna put it on a small scale, but kind of imagine. I'm gonna kind of relate this to like a Star Wars fan. They're the rebellion, and there's that evil empire. Right. That is. It is. It's an evil empire. To be honest. Yeah. All right. And it has its uh, force users, if you will, these powerful yes. beings um, that are there. But it doesn't. Even though this is intimidating and scary, and they are out of their league yeah. to take on these guys, they're still gonna do it. Yeah. Because it's the right thing to do. We have to expose these people for what they are. Yeah. Because if you kill them broad, then the superheroes don't have their, their power. And then we, the funny thing, too, is that in some of the cases, it actually frees them. Yeah. But Queen Maeve, like you mentioned, she's kind of a prisoner of this. And she yeah. she's become kind of numb to it. I yeah. became a little alcoholic just to deal with the fact that she's not really 100% okay with what she's doing. Yeah. Uh, a train. He's not really that cool with too. But he became a drug addict. Yeah. Just to stay on top, and that's the, the, the real re- the real reason he killed. Um, like like uh, back to the DC Comics comparison. It's like, like it, it got me thinking about like Flash's powers because Flash can move at like C. Flash can move at the speed of light. I mean, faster at times. And oh, Flash yeah. has that um, that the, the 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 speed force gives him that um, energy field that's like it, that. Protects him from impact. If he ever makes a mistake and he runs into something, or he gets smacked by Doomsday, he can live through that because it protects him. But the thing is, the Flash can not just move at super speed; he can also think and react at super speed. And he's yes. a good person, so he's careful. Like well, I think again, my favorite. Um, you and I both are big fans of um, Jim. I think Jim's Big Ego, which is um, the, uh, did the, the Ballad of Barry Allen, which seems so slow. Where it's like to him, the world is is like is almost still. It's 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 everything seems so slow. Yeah. He's lonely in it, but he cares about people. So he he doesn't just run through people. He he takes his time. He he moves around. It's like he's careful. Okay, put him on drugs. Put him on yeah, drugs, was, and where he's was, not paying attention because that's why A Train killed Robin. It was it was there's two, Yeah, there's two examples of this in in DC Comics in a way. Um, one. Was uh, was an alternative universe version when Grant Morrison uh, tried to reintroduce the crime syndicate. Right. He wasn't able to bring the multiverse yet, so he made an antimatter version of them. And Johnny Quick is their Flash. That Flash is straight up using his speed comes from this heroin-looking substance that he hits yeah. into him, and he needs it. He's addicted to his speed, literally. Yeah. In the TV show. Flash on the CW, um, one of the one of the villains actually, um, in order to gain his to to, to to get the speed that he has or what he needs or whatever, um, this is a version of Zoom, the yeah. second reverse Flash. There's a drug that's created known as Velocity Nine. Yeah, and it does. It still kind of floats around in the rest of the seasons where it's going to give you the speed, mm-hmm. but it doesn't necessarily forever. Yeah, and it does have that that quality. It's like, yeah, imagine for me. So that those episodes came out before the boys were streaming, and, and I was watching going, 
Yo, imagine if the Flash was like addicted to Velocity Nine. Yeah. He's just he's just on Velocity Nine the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. You're because it because it boosts all that power. Yeah. Um, you just said that he thinks at like speed. It's true. What goes beyond that? Because you're fucked up. Now. Yeah. And if you're basically he's he's high driving one of the fastest cars. Yeah. <laughs> in a sense, they were, you know, we, we call it like a regular street, but to a speedster, yeah. that regular street might as well be a, um, like a school zone. Yeah. Residential. And he's going at freaking 150. Yeah. Boom! He was playing right through. And he even said, like, she came out of nowhere. Not really. Yeah. She was saying the street, just, he was high. He wasn't paying attention. Yeah. But that they're standing still. And you are literally moving faster than thought. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna happen. And your end, you can't think clearly because you're on substance. Yeah. Imagine that. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. Great. Well, and, and then uh, later on, in like a couple episodes later, you have Popclaw basically fucking a guy to death. Yeah. Hi. Like, and she's not paying attention. It's like you know, and it's like it, it's kind of, it kind of like. And again, I, I sent you a text message while, while you were while we were watching this to confuse you. It's like this makes me want to support the Sentinel program. Trask was right. It's like, it's like that. that, that that's the thing. It, it's, it's like, yeah, because it's like the thing is. One thing I like about X Men is that it's like, yes, superheroes like these people with superpowers, they're people, and they're being persecuted, and that's not not okay. But they can destroy mountains with their eyes. They are dangerous. So what do you yeah. do? And it's just like you know. No, and, 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 and that actually adds a good point to. The character like Senator Kelly or people like them going on, but they have the ability. Yeah, they do. They have the capability. Yeah. The the good news in Grand that's a hard thing to sell to anybody because yeah. who wouldn't just trust the stranger's word? But the what the major difference with characters like the X Men or Justice League or whatever is that they have a good moral compass and they refuse to be bought or owned by any entity. Right. It's one of the reasons why they don't want regulation. Yeah. It's not that they want to up against the system. It's that they know the system changes. It fluctuates right. between person to person. And they won't have the best interests of heart for the masses. Yeah. Once they see, oh, look who I have on the payroll. Someone who can blow mountains with his eyes. Yeah. I know what to do with that. Really, and what I is, is, um, is like everything that Iron Man in the comics wanted about um, the, the, uh, the initiative that was brought about from the civil during the civil war, um, it, 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 it's every dream he had of the initiative gone wrong. That's another way, aside from you know a lot of the stuff that already did go wrong in the comics, like the secret invasion. But it's just like it, it's yeah. just, it, it's literally like okay, you're you're sponsored by the government, you're government contractors now, and let's say you're working for a corrupt organization like like Vought, you're not yeah. the, the public good is not your highest like. Um, like, like responsibility. It, it's, it's, uh, it's Mr. Egbert, the Chicken Man, the Chicken Man from Breaking Bad. Who's uh, hear it again? No, he's a mafia no. fucking Mandalorian, and he's he runs Vod. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that was Fuck so cool because, because <laughs> I'm, because for me personally, I was watching season two. Like, I was late to season two in a way because I know season two came out like a summer. Yeah, but I was watching. I caught up on season two. While watching season two of the Mandalorian, right. So I'm getting like like double the Esposito, man. That's that's what I said. I'm getting double this guy. I'm like so so good at being a villain, and he he loves it. Like he's a oh man, have you seen an interview with this guy? He is so nice. He is so cool. He has the brightest smile. Yeah. Like you want to see this guy laugh. He makes you want to smile. But my God, he's good at being a villain. Oh yeah. In fact. He's so good that they actually cast him as a villain in the DuckTales series. Nice. So he's even a villain in a children's show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of times, you know, the actors that do that, they were nice guys. It's like, you know, it's, it's that they get to yeah, play I a know. bad guy. Oh, no, you should see him in Breaking Bad. Oh, like, he's... And Breaking oh, yeah. Bad, he kind of gets to do both things, because he's also, like, he's kind of, like, Walter White's best boss for a while. It's like, oh, well, this is, like, at a whole facility, and he takes care of me. He's, like, he's, he's very professional. It's, like, everything's cool. And then, you know, then you see him, like, um, you know, you know, put on a, a hazmat suit just to stab a guy to death. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, oh, shit, this guy's ruthless. 
Um, that's his name. Gene Carlo Esposito. That's yeah. his name. He's he plays uh, Stan Edgar in The Boys. Yeah. Uh, um, Moff Gideon in The Mandalorian. Uh, yeah, love, love this guy. Uh, he's a fan of the blot in the uh, DuckTales reboot. That's who he is. What, what is he in the DuckTales reboot? The Phantom Blot. Do you ever remember that character? Phantom, the Phantom what? Blot. B-O-L-O-T. The Phantom Blot. I'm trying to remember the Phantom Blot. Okay, so there was an episode It was an episode in the old DuckTales cartoon from the 80s right. where this character that like he's like head to toe in what looks like like a, like a cheesy ghost costume, but it's all black, not white. Right. Like, but the hood, the, the, the color. Yeah. And he has, like, he has, like, these glowing eyes and a smile. And it was, like, part of this spy thing. I think it was connected to, like, the Double O Duck episode, okay. in fact. And it turns out that this character actually existed in old Disney Duck comics. Like, yeah. the old Uncle Scrooge comics and all that other stuff. Yeah. And they brought him back as a member of uh, Fowl. You remember Fowl? Okay, well, I know Fowl. Um, okay, yeah. because Fowl, Fowl shows up in DuckTales. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, they're the, um... Yeah. They're the main... It, it, the, main it, the new DuckTales cartoon is basically the Disney Afternoon multiverse revamp. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's amazing. And, Complete and, uh, gummy bears. <laughs> about, uh, about the Phantom Blood, so like, we can move out back to the boys, is uh, they, they, they definitely change his origin because... So the Phantom Blot in the new show, he's um, he's actually connected to Magic of the Spell. Okay. So, so Magic of the Spell in the in the in the newer show, her history was that she actually um, she used to rule with her brother mm-hmm. over like the, um, like in like in you know like in Eastern European countries and stuff. Yeah. And she she you know they they enslaved them or whatever. And at one point. Her, um, it got crazy. She was just, 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 just taking control of her, and there was this one. This, there was one person that tried to rise up to stop them, and found a way to like get her of her brother or whatever. But so she went crazy. He's been hunting her down ever since and trying to destroy magic. Each time uh, he would lose. And his name so, okay. was Mordo. No more sorcerers. But he he would lose he would lose but then he'd come back and he kept building technology to fight against magic and eventually he built what looks like a ducktails infinity god honestly out of electrons yeah and what it does is it sucks magic yeah and it can take magic out of anything any curse any blessing it can absorb magical beings and he uses it and he gives you directly back so it's like oh so, so he basically so he, like, can cast a spell magic on anything and then, and then yeah. redirect that magic for an, uh, an eldritch blast at will. I'm making this as a D and D item. <laughs> but it was it was really it was really cool because while he has a hatred for Magicka, there is a character in the show created from the show that's connected to Magicka, um, who's one of Webby's best friends, and she is essentially a magic being. So that means she's on the chopping block. Because just like you made that joke, uh, Mordo, no more sorcerers. That is pretty much Ken. He is. Yeah. They took the Phantom Block. Um, the look, the aesthetic the character, and then they put that kind of backstory where, like, oh, you kind of sympathize with him in a way. Yeah. Like, you, because of the the fact that his people, his village orders, was being, you know, ravaged and the, their gold was being ransacked and distorted. It's like, yeah, you understand why he became bad. Yeah. So, anyway. The ancient one uh, lied back, to him for so many years. Yeah. So, back, back to the dark dimension this entire time. <laughs> okay, so what do you, what did you think of, um, of the deep. <laughs> and his Next journey. question. Um, no. Okay. So, so like, okay. Oh, I, now, if I, if I recall, yeah, if I recall the, the, the sexual assault that Starlight went through in the comics was much yeah. worse. Because I think she basically yes. had to bang the entire team. Uh, essentially. Yes. And uh, yes. so, like, they're like, you're, you're basically our, our sex doll. In, in this, where yeah. where here it was just one person, but everybody else just ignored it, and and yeah. and, and wouldn't and, and wouldn't help her out, which I think rings very true for a lot of sexual abuse that goes on in the workplace that that's been coming out a lot lately. Um, but, was, but it was, but like, it was the, okay. When, when he they, they set him up. What I find interesting about the deep is they set him up as the most despicable 
scumbag. One of the most despicable scumbags in the show. Not to the point where he murders people, but just like yeah. he's he's a human piece of dog shit who yeah. takes this wonderful this wonderful sweet person who genuinely wants to be a hero and genuinely wants to do good things and and just ruins her dreams and just and and just screws and just screws her over right off the bat. Um and then the rest of the show he's the giant joke, which I, I recall is what happened in the comics more or less. Is like I kind of swore I I, I kind of swore the stealing of I, I want to say I read the stealing of of, of, the, of the dolphin in the comics of him trying to get the dolphin to safety. I remember reading that and then the slow mo and the panel and the dolphin and then I got to see it. It's just like it, he I, I I think he's interesting because it's like it, it's basically kind of um it's sort of it, it's really a story about um well initially it's it's basically about it, it's a, a really good like way to introduce how corrupt the um the seven are and and how yeah. what 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 they're really about they're really a bunch of scumbags with way too much power and they have all of the the, the glamour and prestige and spoilingness of, of a celebrity with with incredible powers and no oversight um and they and they just get away with whatever and he basically he straight up takes advantage of her and 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 manipulates her into giving her giving her giving him a blowjob by you know stating like well if you want to be on the team you got to be you know you have to like yeah. you have to play ball or like who's gonna believe you I'll tell them you assaulted me he just basically he, yeah. he just ambushes her with this yeah this is her dream she didn't know what to do um, and I think a lot of people have made mistakes like this and have been you know put into this situation where they've been taken advantage of by someone and then like later they find their strength it, I mean it happens to people that's that's what happens no, when you're a victim it's, it's like it's it, it, to quote another science fiction classic of ours uh firefly it's like it's what shepherd books said about the operative they come at you sideways they flank yeah you. or as you like to say uh raptors hunting packs you know it, it's just like they, they 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 ambush you and you're not ready for it and then later you're like ah ha ha but it's like you know here's the thing for me yeah um if it wasn't for the rest of them yeah especially especially on that he, the deep would probably be the number one fucker, right? Yeah. He would be like, oh, this this disgusting, creepy dude. Uh, like, we don't know how he got, and that's the thing too, like, what I thought was cool about the, sh the show is that he wasn't always like this. Yeah. I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying that just, it's almost as if, that's the thing is, being in the seven, being part of the superhero community, because all these superheroes are connected to this company. Right. You know, you can't get. It's also you can't get away with it. If you if you're outside the company, first of all, you're shunned, probably hunted. You're considered a vigilante. This is their way of registering them, if you will. Yeah. But once they're in there, they just let them do whatever, and 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 the lifestyle just completely changes. No, yeah. they're no longer help. Yeah. They, they tell you who and what to say. Yeah. Look at how well it will make them look good right. for sales and whatever. So of course your mindset changes, and it's like that's how he becomes this this scumbag. Mm -hmm. But it's a scumbag that's very relatable to Hollywood right. and corporate. Well, also, and it's like, but, but hold on. Yeah. The thing is, this story, I think it was nice to streamline it and keep it just to him for the moment. Yeah, because it was it wasn't like because I, I I think I read somewhere like people going, oh, this is the way of like touching on like like the Me Too movement, because around the time that this episode came out, these, these episodes came out, this was parallel. I would argue yeah. it's almost what? like these issues are stay with us and they're timeless, and it's not necessarily the Me Too movement, it's this no, kind of shit's I'm, been going on forever. But that's what I'm trying to say. You're, yeah. you're, 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 you're getting me before I get to win the race here. Right. Because God wrote this story, mm -hmm. and even though in the, in, in the story, Starlight, it's worse, because yeah, she's passed around, but that yeah. too does happen. Yeah. That, that horror story happens about superpowers as well. Right. And that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to point a light at that exists. Yeah. All I'm doing is that I'm putting it, I'm putting it into my comic book superhero fiction world. Yeah. But I'm putting a light, a light on this abuse that does happen. Um, yeah. And it wasn't just this. Like it's throughout the, throughout the show, you get to see the hypocrisy of a lot of institutions yeah. But they're blending in with superhero. Like, dude, remember the um Ezekiel in the church? Who's, yeah, yeah, who's gay <laughs> and is like, but is preaching against homosexuality in the church. The whole, the whole—not just the church, but remember the whole um 
it's almost like a concert. Like it was almost like a Christian thing. Yeah. When they wanted Starlight to be there. Yeah. And all this. Oh, all that, that was so was Ennis. Cool. That was so grotesque. It was like yeah. he, was, he was he was just speaking through Carl Urban at that point. <laughs> But it's, but but no, but seriously though, no, that whole thing though, that the whole convention and all this stuff, and it's like that stuff exists yeah. in America. We do have these evangelical kind of things, and there are people who are really good, and you got people who are not, but pretend to be, and you'll never know. Yeah, it's only behind closed doors, and it's like that's that was what's really cool. I just want to say one thing though, mm-hmm. it is renewed for season three. It's really why I want to talk. About, I wanted you to see the show because I'm not sure when season three comes out, and I just wanted to get us caught up for season right. three. Right. Season three is going to be crazy. Um, I know what I do know is that they're going to play on a story arc that is out of God and control, which was called Supergasm. And basically, what it is is okay, so once a year. There's this freaking Woodstock-like event mm-hmm. that bought them for all their supers to basically go out there, party, and have massive orgy. Okay. To get all the negative things out of their system so they can be clean-cut in public or whatever. And, all stuff. and they're, they're, there's a specific place where it is. Okay. So right, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. So basically, it's The Purge, but with sex. And effectively... Yes. That, that one Star Trek episode, The Rise of the Archons, again. Oh, are you in town for the festival? Oh, it's almost time for the festival at 12 o'clock. Rolls at 12 o'clock. It's like, ah! And Kirk's like, what the fuck? And just people just start raping and killing each other. Yeah, and then people start grabbing produce and start shoving it in their asses. Yeah, yeah exactly. and, and, and Kirk and Spock are like, what the fuck? Just, that's Spock. Spock's like, what the fuck, Jim? <laughs> that's, when, that's when Spock's human side comes out. All of a sudden, the Vulcan's gone. Yeah. He's like, what? Stop touching! Um, McCoy's like, oh, what's your logical assessment of this? Shut the fuck up, McCoy! Get the fuck out of there! (laughs) (laughs) But what happens is, um, the public doesn't know about it. Yeah. Okay, this is like a deep, deep secret event. Even though it's a big extravaganza with, like, thousands of people, it's held somewhere deeply secret. There's, there's like, SWAT, there's a whole army that's making sure that no one stumbles upon this. Yeah. It's something that the super uh, hero uh, community knows. It's some, of course, the the the, the uh, you know government knows about some degree and trying to get whatever. So that's that's coming up. That storyline is coming up, and the characters that are that play a bigger role in it. Um, one character that's coming up. I didn't get to. Like I guess I read about it, but didn't get to read that part. Uh, one of the characters coming up is named Soldier Boy. And he is meant to be a Captain America analog. Okay. Right? He's going to be played, it's confirmed, I've even seen it in uh, IMB, uh, Jensen Ackles, who I happen to love. Jensen Ackles uh, was one of the leads in uh, Supernatural. Okay? Yeah. Uh, one of Winchester's. Um, that's, I mean, he's best known for that show because he was on this show for the whole series, which is 15 years. It was a yeah. 15 season. It just it ended not too long ago. Um, he's freed up, but personally, I can't wait to see him. You're gonna love him. He's a great actor, great action guy. I mean, he's the kind of the guy he played is the kind of character you would love to play in the game. Yeah, like right all the angels. Well, Supernatural is of one of those shows that you've been trying to get me into for the longest time, and I've never watched. So it's like. But here's the thing. Yeah. But check this out, though. He does have some uh, in his acting career. He does have some DC comic ties. Yeah. Um. Because when they made the director DVD um, Batman Under the Red Hood, yeah, I don't know if you ever saw that one. Yeah, I did. I like he's it. Red Hood. It's good. What? He's Red Hood. He's Red Hood. He's he, Jason Todd. Yeah, when Jason's grown up, that's him. Okay. He, that. he he's a huge Batman fan. Yeah. But he also loved the character, and ever since he did the voice, many fans, including myself, kind of petitioned. That he should be him in the films. Like right. I want to see him as Jason Todd. So I think back in like 2018 for Halloween, he made his own Red Hood cosplay and put it on Instagram. He made the, the hood and he even had the, the Robin mask underneath. Like I was like, he oh, was spot on. Nice. Um. So currently, also the DC movies, uh, the anime movies. I mean, yeah. Uh, they're finally you making. Don't talk about uh, 
No, no, because I'm just saying this was in relation, in relation to this actor. Right. In the animated movies, they're, uh, they're releasing um, an adaptation of Batman, The Long Halloween. Ooh. And they're actually breaking it into two parts, because I want to do it justice. So there's one Halloween part one and two. The point is... They're an Infinity War. Jen, the point is, Jensen Ackles is playing Batman. Nice. And I, there's a trailer out on, uh, on YouTube, and I listened to him. I almost had a hard time, like, hearing him, because to me, that was Batman. I was like, yeah. what? He didn't, I, he sounded like a Batman, like a Kevin Conroy type, but, but not copying Kevin Conroy. He's right. his own man. He was a voice you would pay, imagine. I was like, what? He went from Jason Todd to Batman? That's nice. Well, he's going to be in this show come season three. Um, I don't know how to feel because I have a good feeling I'm not going to like the character he's playing. I feel like he's going to be a real freaking scumbag. Well, I mean, you know, I don't... Yeah, Homelander's a scumbag, but, I mean, uh, the guy playing him is doing a great oh. job. I mean, it's just like... Oh. I mean, like active, no, no, I mean, like, no, that, that's, what, that's, what, that's what's great about it. It's, it's, it's like, um, everybody's compelling. Even if you hate them, it's like, oh, my God, Islander's such a fucking scumbag. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just like, they're just, oh, so... Like, oh, I, I, let's let's... Skip ahead a little bit. Uh, let's talk about uh, Stormfront for a minute. Like I was going to, yes. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. So, I mean, of Go. course, uh, Stormfront was actually uh, a dude in the comics. And they, she's a lady here, and she's really hot. And she's a Nazi. And, uh, and, and, and it's like... When she was a he in the comics, she was a Nazi, too. Yeah, and, and she's still a Nazi in this version. Yeah. But it's just like, it's like she's, she's such a monster. She's she's just doing horrible. She's like she's like basically the second most. I can't. T I, I, that's the thing. Like like watching the climax, I couldn't tell whether or not she was the like the the worst person. In at, at, like I, I didn't know who in that couple was more. Like I, I had trouble f figuring out like who's the main bad guy here. Is it Homelander or is it Stormfront? I feel like Stormfront's kind of like the main bad guy of season two. Uh, where where Homelander we're gonna we're gonna kick his ass for good later. Um, yeah. But like, I'm trying. I, I I couldn't tell who's worse because like Homelander is like she's trying to turn him into the Ubermesh, um, and mm -hmm. we know he's a a, a, a freaking breast milk drinking weirdo who murders people wantonly and cares nothing about no one but himself, and he's an asshole. And it's like, but but like she's like literally a Nazi with superpowers, and it's just like. Um, mm -hmm. And speaking of topicalness, it was like it was it was very interesting seeing his rise play out is like she was trying to bring fascism back with him and it was it struck a little close to home given what's been happening around here it was just like yeah you know, fascism, know conspiracy, fascism conspiracy theories and using the internet to manipulate people and brainwash people oh geez you know yeah but i i and i personally don't have a problem with this again i, I say this because a lot of the things they're taking from are the source material yeah. and the reason it's in the source material is because it's intelligent timeless. people it's a timeless like, problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So intelligent people like Garth Ennis or Gelson Warner, they're noticing these things. Yeah. And they're they're they're, they're trying to in a way I, I don't know if it's sneak exactly, but they're trying to put it into their world because they're trying to fuse this super fantastical world with, with the realistic world. And these things yeah. if these things came together, unfortunately, yeah. What's so sad though is that when these stories are written the, the the climate that we have currently didn't exist. It was subverted, yeah. but it didn't. It wasn't as overt. Yeah. And now it's becoming just as overt as the comics were. Because I was like, yeah. Because some people are like, oh, the comics aren't that subtle. Yeah, but unfortunately, reality has become not so subtle yeah. anymore either. And That's you have, the and you have alleged friends of, of someone like Gail Simone, like Ethan Van Skyver, uh, yeah. condemning his own friend uh, because he's been brainwashed and believes the shit himself. And you know. And, yeah, it, it's it's crazy because it's it's the kind of thing that I what when when you yeah were kind of drinking the Kool Aid for mm -hmm. a little bit yeah uh, and and you and I were having arguments about such things because I remember you going oh the these comics it's too blatant and it's like is this the same dude from high school really yeah was in college too like yeah. Um, it, it, it's it's just that uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to get out of that rabbit hole. It's like you know, yeah, I'm not here to pick on you, but I was like, it was like that moment between me, you, and college, 
and and before the navy, like by one by one spot just before you went into the navy, it was like, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> what is he? What is he watching? <laughs> Who's he talking to? I guess we'll blame Razor Fist for um, the I don't know. Uh, so. <laughs> I just wanted but, Republican but, friends. I wanted, like, a dude who's, like, a Republican who I don't agree with on everything, but, like, is, like, we can we can agree to disagree. And I just started, I don't know. I don't know what happened. And then it's just, uh, like, well, I think there's a problem yeah, when your entire political party is based on conspiracy theories. I think that's, you know. Yeah, there's, kind of there's that too. I mean, but, cell at that point. Uh, uh, hold on, though. Before, before this ends, I do want to say uh, there's, there's, Crazies on both sides, okay? Let's not just vilify one. Thank you, or thank, whatever. thank you for putting out the disclaimer, Josh. <laughs> yes, there <laughs> no, is crazy. I want to keep, yes. keep it hundred. I want to yeah. keep it hundred. Here's the thing. It's my like, here's here's the thing, that dude. Yes, there is crazy mm -hmm. on both sides. I hate Anita Sarkeesian with a fiery passion, um, and and there are liberals out there that make the rest of us look bad. I will take those fuckers any day over the week, any day of the week over what the Republicans are doing right now. I will take them any day over the week of the QAnon assholes who yes, believe but. the ballots were fed to chickens and the chickens were burned. I will, I, like, you know what? No. You know what? No. Because as bad as Anita Sarkeesian is, it's like, yeah, she doesn't represent all Democrats. She's not all of them. But these assholes, the yeah. Tucker Carlson's of the world, are going to act like that's all we are. Um, and, and continue no, I, the I manipulation machine. So. Dude, I, I, I hear you. Yeah. I'm only saying, I'm only bringing that up uh, because I'm just saying that they, they exist. Yeah. And if if the Democratic Party did the same thing that the Republican Party did, yeah. which is legitimize, legitimize their loud, crazy faction right. into public office and let them get away with things, turning a blind eye here or there, yeah. it, would, it would be that way, though. Right. And that's all I'm saying. It's like, and that, so, it's almost as if with, with the Democrats, for now, it's not perfect, right. but for now, they're looking at what the other side's doing, going, that's a blueprint, that's a blueprint for destruction. Yeah. No matter what, we got, we, we got progressive ideas, but we need to go about them logically and as adults and understand how to go about them. Again, that's why I like Joe Biden, whereas, like, Malmoto... Uh, was like, no, Joe Biden's not good enough. Joe, like, oh, yeah, dude, you have no idea. It's in the earlier episodes of Pirate Radio, when it was just him uh, here. The uh, yeah, because you're because uh, you're the other Josh. You're the other Josh. You're the weird Josh. I, no, I was fucking Bernie, bro. Like, like, oh, yeah, like nothing's ever good enough for this fucking guy. He's all like, no, it's not gonna. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden's not gonna do. Okay, you know why I like Joe Biden? And like, he, and, oh, he kept fucking with me and sending me shit on Facebook. Oh, like making fun of Joe Biden. Yeah, who became president? It's almost like I picked yeah, the but... guy who's practical, who can work with Republicans and Democrats equally. It's almost like that was the yeah. rational choice. Yeah, but I don't want to slam that's, Bernie. That's... I know you love Bernie too. I love Bernie. I love Bur Bernie, especially oh, because I saw his. Oh, yeah, no, no. I'm not turning that. I'm not going to turn this into a Biden versus Bernie debate. Yeah. Because, because to me, well, at the end of the day, see a rap battle. Well, no. You know I, more but, about that. Okay. Take no, no, no. They won't do a battle. But, but if you haven't, I will send you a link. I am a personal fan of epic rap battles uh, of history. Yeah. If anyone hasn't seen the show, oh my God, what are you doing? You have yeah. to see that. And they did do um, uh, Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. when it happened and it was wonderful um it I, if i'm if i'm calling it fair it was a little bias for biden he had more time but trump had some serious <laughs> but, but, trump had some really, <laughs> but but trump had some serious burns so it kind of to me I almost balanced out because i think trump had some really really good disses and it was like I'll give them this. They at least try to embody the characters. Yeah. They go and they, they both. It's, it becomes as fair as they possibly can. So I haven't seen as this a, yet, but I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna host a prediction here. I bet the burns that the fake Trump in the epic rap battles history are actually better than anything Donald Trump would ever come up with on himself on his own. Oh God! Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. You because you, you talked to my brother who um, loves hip hop yeah. and it's probably. Been yeah, because Trump has basically convinced every uh, convinced the QAnon people oh. that he is a badass and and he's awesome when he's he's not and he yeah. he's actually sucks at everything. So you know, oh. yeah. 
Hold on, back to what I'm saying. Yeah. My brother can help you. You should watch this with my brother because I know he knows hip hop more and, yeah. and, and understands how the writing scenes and yeah. the one hundred is not up in there. Well, you're you probably really should... very conscious, especially politically recent, like in recent years. Listen, listen to me. You should really watch this with him because it's not only comedy, yeah, but it's really for hip hop. But with these limitations and these these voices, the rhyming that that Trump in that does, there's no way the real world could do it. Right. I mean, the man, these people have talent. They they yeah. these people have are good with the pen. Uh, to the point that I have seen reactions from actual rappers, actual YouTube rappers, who go, "Who is writing this shit?" Because you're writing like you are battle rapper, battle rappers. This is they supposed are. to be love. They've made an entire. I mean, it's, it's geeky and it's silly what they do, but it's like, like they, 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 they do they do it all the time, and they, and they make a, make a show out of it. They well, do a because, nice job. Well, because the history of it goes like this. The thing is, um, it's created by a guy named Nice Peter and a guy named Epic Boy. Mm -hmm. All right, and they most of the time they're playing the characters. Yeah, sometimes the guest characters and so on. Um, the thing is, what they both have in common is they love music. Yeah. Uh, Peter is uh, more of a singer-songwriter type person, but he does love hip hop. Yeah. And Lloyd grew up on hip hop. Lloyd, um, I mean, he loves that too, but Lloyd, Lloyd is an old school New York, East Coast biggie, loves hip hop, and he does love battle rap. Yeah. But how they met was through improv comedy. Nice. Okay, because that's another thing that Lloyd loves in so does uh, Peter. They love uh, just it's it's kind of like me and you, but yeah. you can cool rap. Yeah. <laughs> so they met at the California Improv. Yeah. Uh, and 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 and, um, and that's how it started. They were, and they had they had an improv show about historical people doing battle rap. And they go, yeah. oh, throw out a name, throw out a name, let's go. And they did it on stage. Yeah. Then they said, hey, why don't we do it? For, for shits on YouTube. This is back when YouTube was young. Yeah. And three episodes in a few days with a fifty dollar budget. Yeah. And it blew up. Yeah. Their second video is what we really exploded because their second video was Adolf Hitler versus Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah. Which they ended up they ended up turning that into a trilogy. Nice. Um, my my favorites are Wolverine versus Freddy Krueger and uh, the Joker versus it. It's like, like well, Wolverine yeah. versus Freddy Krueger. That's just that's a straight up just, I that's canon. That happened at some point. That's just a fight that Wolverine and Freddy had. Well, that's how Wolverine met Freddy Krueger. He was he was sleeping one night. Freddy fucked with him, and that's how they fought through rap battle. Because was... you know Freddy would do it. Freddy would start rapping to fuck with Wolverine, and it's like all right. That like... was cool. <laughs> that was. I'm just another part of the, of the show here, but uh, I just I, I got to gush over this because I'm a huge fanboy, and it was so good. And what I love is, because I also watch the behind the scenes. They have a, I have a second channel which shows behind the scenes the making of these uh, episodes. Right. And Lloyd was all over this. Yeah. He played Wolverine. Yeah. And he also plays Pennywise, by the way. Yeah. That, that. He was a really good nice, Pennywise. Not, nice Peter played the Joker. Right. Um, it's actually a different rapper who played uh, Freddy Krueger. Not it's not uh, either one of them. But anyway, uh, but Wolverine. Lloyd is a huge Wolverine fan. He's just as big a fan as you and my brother Wolverine. Like, I love Wolverine. No, you guys love Wolverine, right? And what you, you know what pisses um, Lloyd off? Because Lloyd is a, short, is a short guy. He's shorter than you and me. Yeah. So it bothers him that Wolverine is not short in the movies. Yeah. Because Wolverine is like the most bad short dude in all fiction. And he's like, what? Yeah. That's why he's Wolverine. The Wolverine is a small yeah. mammal that will fuck you up. It's yeah. like, that's the entire point. It can kill so a bear. So, <laughs> like, so, he, so he's like, God damn it, I'm Wolverine, and we're not we're not doing camera angles to make me bigger. Mm -hmm. No, we're gonna keep my ass short. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this justice. And so I think when he got the character, he really put everything into writing it because the disses were so fire. Yeah. My God. If you haven't seen this thing, I don't want to even say the lines because I'm just like, you gotta watch it. Jesus, he murders this thing. It's Wolverine won like, too, by the way. I, I'm, I'm just like, 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 like I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, who won? Yeah, Wolverine. Wolverine fucking won. Most, 
most people on, on the, in the comments say we'll read it anyway. Yeah, I mean, I have, okay, Freddy did good. You know what? It, again, it works as a crossover really well because it's like if you if you write this story, Freddy's the villain. He attacks yeah. the X Men. If you want a happy ending, you're gonna have Wolverine win. Yeah. And so it's like it, Freddy yeah. doesn't need to win. Freddy just needs to come in and be a. It it was okay, great. Okay. Freddy Freddy doesn't need to win. Freddy is it, it's like Freddy yeah. versus Jason all over again. It's just like he didn't win. Did, did. He just he showed up and kicked some ass. It's good. It's like I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't leave without saying this now. I can't. I, can't, I gotta do this. Yeah. <laughs> Wolverine's opening lines. Um. That's a nice glove, bug, but I'm real from bones to teeth. That, uh, that glove's like a strap-on. There's a pussy underneath. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh, Jesus, no! Right out of the gate, he haymakers him. I was just like, oh, this is cool. Um, but anyway, let's, uh, let's try to wrap up whatever we got about the uh, I feel like we're not really done with the boys. It's like we, we barely started. It's like, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. I mean, it's like, um... No, no. I know, like, we, we talked about the seven. Yeah. Uh, we talked about, um, what's her name? Uh, Stormfront, we mixed that in a bit. Um, but we really... There's not much to talk about black like, and white. What I want to talk about is, like, like, the characters. It's like how, especially, like, the boys themselves. It's like, everybody is magnetic. Yeah. Everybody is, like, like, back to the deep. I never really finished with my point on the deep. The Deep is, like, really monstrous early on, but then you get to sympathize with him. You get, like, well, first of all, you really get to see his his karma kick him in the ass. Like, by the yes, end of season that. one, he is at... He got everything he deserved. He even got sexually assaulted. You know? Yeah. Like, to, you know, yeah. like, he got, he got, he got everything... Everything that, like, like everything that he did, like, blow up his face. And you're kind yeah. of seeing a redemption arc in season two, but really, he just kind of wants to get back on top. Yeah, I really... I personally, I personally want, I want to see him actually learn a lesson. Yeah. Like, if like I was with him on his feels like he's kind of learning, starting to learn a lesson. Like, yeah, but he also, but, 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 he, but you just mentioned it, he kind of heel turns a little bit at the end. Right. Because he's gone through a lot of this stuff, but at the same time, at the end of the day, he just wants to get back to the side of me. things. Yeah. Tucking up all this bullshit is, is all, it's going to take me back to where I want to be, right. so I can be a, you know. I well, like, I'm like, I'm like, not yeah, good. I was especially so, I was especially feeling for Huey um, throughout much of yes. season one, and and like and like I was really um, yeah. I, I, we never really actually talked about the boys themselves. It's like I don't know, um, I don't know. Go on, yeah, go on. like and that's the thing. It's like they're they're a great little resistance group, and it's like they're all so likable and awesome. Um, like Mother's Milk is probably my personal favorite. He is such a dad. Yeah, yeah. I love Mother's Milk. He's just, and it, no, dude, that first scene with him is hilarious. It, 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 it's just it's like I watch put your John Hancock's on that board. It's just as it why we put your John Hancock says not respect the all, all the other net. Uh, what was that? It was like, like all the other people here. And he's just he's just he's just a good guy trying yeah. to do the right thing wherever he can. And he's so he's so like he he's 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 a genius too. He's like the tactician. He's like. He knows the practical way to solve everything, and then you find out his story about like in season two, where it's like I really liked how like he's the first person like aside from Huey to really accept Starlight, like like um, yeah. whereas like Frenchie's the first person really to accept the female, um, yeah. where Butcher's like yeah superhumans fuck them, um, they bond when they, they bond over talking about their dad like for, like like Mother's Milk and Starlight bond talking over their dads, um, and and it, it goes back in that you hear his story about his, his father died. Um, basically trying to bring down Vaught. Um, and he's carrying... And then it's reflected and she notices he's got OCD. He's trying to control things. He's trying to... Like, his whole life is about order because there's so much he can't control. There's so much chaos. He just... He tries to, like... In little little ways, he tries to bring that order about. And he really holds them together. And he doesn't want to be the leader, even though he's got good leadership qualities. He's straight up... Oh, no, no, I'd like, I don't want to do this shit. No, Butcher, we need you. You got to do this. Um, no, because he, doesn't, he didn't even want to be back in that kind of life. Right. You know? I love him too. He's, little, he's very little headed. Yeah. He is, I mean, being a dad and a husband, he kind of is like the parent in that group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's constantly trying to, you know, keep um, Butcher and Huey civil because they're constantly butting heads. Right. Um, I've noticed probably, a very Raphael, Leonardo sort of like relationship with the two of them. <laughs> yeah. In a, in a way. Um, it's, it's, yeah, no, Mother Milk is, and he's funny, especially because, he, you see this guy, he's not just 
he's not just like a, 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 a leader and he's sensible, but then he is, he's, just, he's just badass. Yeah. He's a he's a but motherfucker he, with a heart of gold. You just a motherfucker. He's a motherfucker with a heart of gold, and when he's on the phone with like his wife or his kid, he gets so soft. Yeah. It's the funniest thing. No, but that was, I, that was, that was great. I, I love you, boo, and then everybody fucks him. But meanwhile, okay, no, but then let's talk about Frenchie. But then Frenchie's like like making fun of her that. Then with Frenchie, but Frenchie's the exact same way with Cherie. She was just this, like, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. It's like, like, like like you know I care about you. It's like. Uh, like you better you owe this to me next time and she grabs him by the dick and it's like do you it's like I love you honey and like that's right <laughs> it's like this, the, bo- the boys themselves the group Butcher Frenchie Mother's Milk Huey the female and Starlight I love too. I consider Starlight a member of the team at this yeah, point yeah. I want to talk about the the, 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 the the team a bit yeah but I also want to spend a little bit of time on the fact that I'm sorry I'm a hopeless romantic I love Huey and Starlight oh yeah yeah. Oh my god. It's like they both, have their, they have they both have this individual journey and they just find each other. It's all yes. like, and it's and, and I was reading I was reading about like uh, I was I did a little research after watching the whole thing. Um and it was it was like yeah, Garth Ennis she was just supposed to be a joke. She was a throwaway joke. Where like yeah. this girl like wants to be, it it reminds me of like the mayor's daughter in um in Preacher who um the Nazi guy um like dates and then okay. like, is a jerk too and then he orders then he gets his come up at the end of the issue when he ordered like a, a, a gang rape scenario, and then he gets gang raped. It's like it, it's yeah. like it's like expanding that character's role to some degree. It's like um, he was she was supposed to be a throwaway joke where this character wants to is is all hopeful and wants to be a part of this, and then she gets yeah. sexually assault like sexually assaulted basically, and yeah. he felt really bad for her, and like Huey's feeling like crap on a park bench. Oh look, here comes Starlight, and it was like it's almost like an apology to this character, and he and he just let her grow. And you see her, you have to go through this this journey of revenge to get justice for Robin and also move on with his life. She's trying to find who she is and wanted to be this 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 great hero, and she realizes her heroes are bad, and then winds up questioning all of her morals and whatnot. It, it, like, um, and they just find each other, and it's very very beautiful. They're just like like they're always great on scene together. On, on, on. In addition, in addition to that, I feel like they're the soul of both of those groups. Yeah. Because because the boys, especially if it's all about the butcher, yeah. it's a dark group. Right. Yeah. Like he's a, Bill is in a really dark goddamn place. Now we I understand. Talk about we gotta talk about. I've been avoiding talking about Billy. We gotta talk about Billy. So. Yeah, no, we gotta talk about the butcher. But yeah. that's the thing is it, because everything leads because if we're talking about human, it's it all connected to him, and yeah. he's in a dark place. And as a result, if it's if you're just following his orders or play by his book, um. They're they're a different version of corrupt. They're just a, they're they're a different flavor of bad right. fighting with seven as bad. And that's the thing is, Huey's like, look, remember who they are? They're the bad guys. We shouldn't do exactly like them just to stop them. Right. And Starlet is like, hey, we're supposed to be superheroes. We shouldn't be accepting these things just cause. So even though no one's really listening to them. Yeah. It's really cool how they found each other because that's what it is. They are the souls of that. Yeah, I'll show you that. That's and she did reach some. Through, and the thing, Starlight did reach someone. She reached reached Maeve, and it almost feels like she's yeah, kind she of did. starting to reach people like A Train and maybe the Deep. Whereas Huey, Huey has bad about it. Well, he where Huey, don't know. But, where Huey has definitely touched Mother's Milk. I mean, he and Frenchie too. Let's be honest. Frenchie doesn't have a soft spot for him. I love the well, stereotype of a Frenchman that just kisses men on the mouth. By the way. Oh no no no! It's, I love it's, Frenchie again, so much. I think it's I think it's a totally dark and it's staying in there like this to just run with it. Is the idea is I want him to be just so French. Yeah. I mean the fact that <laughs> think about this. But he's he's so affectionate. He's touching. Come come come! He's the first one to 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 break bread with him. Come drink with me. Smoke with me. He he falls so head over heels for you know the female. He's quick. It's all about God and the he's passion. Just so he's just the the, the, the most likable drug abusing arms re- arms dealer I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, he, but he's also like a, he's also like a genius when it comes to all this like. Yeah. No, my, my favorite market. my favorite line is is like he goes over to Huey's house with with him and like and like he's he hears the smashing going on in the room when he's talking to his dad and he comes outside and he's like my father was a bipolar when I was a kid he tried to like smother me with a pillow you're okay no. <laughs> it's just like yo thanks <laughs> no no I mean, that's the thing it's like but and 
it's like he's he's very French, but it's not to an insulting level. At least I don't think so. Right. It's, there, there's a lot of counterbalance to him and stuff. Yeah. Okay, we got um. I don't want to skip her, so let's go really quickly with the female. Female, yeah. Yeah, because then the, then we can spend a lot of time on the butcher. Um, this is a lot of time on the butcher. But she's with, a, she's a badass, and I, I, I think what kind of works with her in the group is because it's like she's she's got superpowers, but she's not really a superhero. She's really just a victim. She's kind of a she feels like a character that would be at home in a different type of genre. Like, like I mean, she basically is a child soldier uh, that's being forced into terrorism and has basically become an assassin who happens to have superpowers. And um, and she's kind of wild and dangerous. Um, the um, but it, it, it's like I, I like how like um, it, it feels like there's a good like that's one of the earliest arcs they just have to deal with is just like they, they uncover what's going on with um, the the the, uh, the compound D, compound V or compound D is what it's called right compound D um, and uh, and they they stumble upon her and they have to. They have to either eliminate her because she's going to kill a lot of people, or they have to, like, rescue her, depending. And, of course, Butcher's like, oh, let's just shoot her. And, like, um, and Frenchie figures out I can... Frenchie connect, immediately connects with her, realizing that she's, um... She, he, he connects with her, basically. He realizes this is his opportunity to help someone again. Because he let down Mallory. Uh, when, mm -hmm. when dealing with uh, Torchlight. Yeah. Um, so yeah. He, he goes about it the other way, he actually brings her in. And... It, it's neat how this, like, family finds each other. It's like they've all been wronged by Vought. They've all been wronged by the Seven in different ways. Um, mm -hmm. And they come together with kind of, like, a mutual mutual alliance. It's like, I think we really get to know the most about the female when her brother's introduced, the telekinetic guy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, and the version I did, I didn't have any subtitles, so I didn't really hear... I couldn't really tell a lot what they were saying to each other. Um, okay. But um, I felt like, again, their acting was on point where I didn't really... I kind of didn't need it. I could kind of understand yeah. what was going on just by their, the way they were playing the characters. Uh, um, the, the dialogue, the dialogue was, was uh, you can understand it pretty easily though. It's basically, she, you know, she finally finds her brother, and he's all about let's 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 return the favor and you know, yeah. kill Murphy's motherfuckers and all stuff. Yeah. And the thing is, she's like no because she understands how dangerous the seven and the seven are and bond, how powerful. <clears throat> so she's like, no, come with me join these guys and he's like now we're gonna get them but also uh, he wants to go home yeah which is i know she wants to go home that's what she wants to go home she wants to go to home and find him yeah that's really what it was that's that's her reason for going home yeah, yeah. and then so and so she's she's like let's let's just leave all the shit behind yeah and he's like no and of course that ends up getting because he's ready to do terrorist shit and she's like what the hell yeah and so that's what ends up getting <clears throat> Um, him and the situation he does with uh, what's her name, uh, uh, Stormfront. Stormfront. Um, but he, I mean, he comes around. He comes around in the end, and he certainly helps out the team. And um, and then we see how monstrous Stormfront really is, where yes. she just murders um, an entire tenement full of black people just to get to him as an excuse. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just like you know, and and, and she, like yeah, she gets and, and she and, and she just has that glare like I'm gonna fuck this bitch up. It's like you know, but she couldn't do it immediately because she was too strong. Because and that's the thing. Storm back to Stormfront, she's the first one, and it was like and like right like right when the moment when you know like like go ahead, laser my fucking tits, I'm not that easily broken. She's the only person who can fuck the bejesus out of out of um, uh, Homelander because yeah, she's yeah. on his on his level, and it was like yeah no, it was like it made perfect. It's funny because again this is the kind of thing that benefits from uh, changing the gender of the character. Yeah. Um, at least to the way it is. Like in the comic, not only is Storefront a male, but they don't have that kind of relationship whatsoever. Right. It's not like it's, there's no anything. It's like they're not even friends. Yeah. Like like Stormfront is the is the gen is the genesis of all this. He was supposed yeah. to be the first one that Bot made back when Bot was a Nazi scientist. Yeah. But eventually became the company for And he hasn't aged since. He's been around since that time. And they were like, okay, let's do that, but let's also play on the fact that because it's a female, yeah, and we're in a patriarch society, what would an intelligent woman do? Yeah. First, you have to change her identity, just like the other guy did, to make it so that you don't, yeah. that way you don't know if it's a mortal running around. Right. And a mortal Nazi running around. 
that yeah that, that's that yeah, two or three yeah. uh, on top of all that also to to make it so that to make you know to, to stay ahead and always be on top and never get screwed by anyone yeah use your intelligence yeah you know know that men we are dumb yeah. We're very dumb. Yeah, and she plays Homelander like a fiddle. But it's, but he, in many ways, she but yeah, she she is, like she he is exactly what she wants. It's like he's the Ubermatch. Well, she, and she got yeah, to no, the Ubermatch, which is what she wants. It's like the the culmination yeah, of everything yeah, yeah. he's wanted. Yeah. Look at that. He literally he literally is a Superman with blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah. That's exactly that. That's what she's I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. She looks and she's like, Oh my god, you're you're it. You're you're my Adam. You're yeah. the thing we create. And so, of course, I'm in love with you. And well, she loves everyone. She manipulates everyone. And uh, not just him, but, I mean, the system. She, she's so smart how to play the media. How to, she must just have to talk in front of a crowd. Yeah. Like, certain people who were Nazis know how to galvanize a crowd. Yeah. Well, and again, <laughs> and that's the thing. It, it's like, um, and that's the thing. It, it's, again, it, like, back to the, the political angle of it. I, like, um, I think uh, The Voice is also reviewed by Red, Red Letter Media, and I like what... Mike, I think, pointed out is that her quote at the end is just like, people like what I am. They just have a problem with the word Nazi, which is very true today, we've unfortunately seen. It's that like, is unfortunately true. Yeah. That is unfortunately true. But, and like, and one, one last thing on Stormfront, it was like, that was the most satisfying fucking beatdown I've ever seen in my life. It was just, it was, it was just, it was just like, they all were working together as a team. I feel like the actual boys themselves got to do a little bit more in season one. We got to see them, like, because they are just dudes with guns. At the end of the day, yeah. So it's like so, but they but they played their part. They shot the bitch. They just she just blew up all their all their weapons, and they were almost fucked. Um, Starlight comes in, fights them. Um, uh, the the, uh, the the female starts kicking butt. She's like, I'm gonna you know, but she's still she still yeah. doesn't know too much from. She gets her neck broken, and then Maeve comes out of nowhere, and then it's just the, it's just Maeve. Starlight and and the female just beating the fuck out of her, just like and Starlight's like, oh, like bring it, bitch! And Starlight's just like, ball, and then she runs I, I away love, like a bitch. And then, I love I love it because it was this universe's like all girl moments, like yeah. you know, like I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean the uh, the scene. No, dude, they get fuck. They they like they they beat her. The grand are just kicking the fuck out of her. They they weren't even punching. Like, fuck you, bitch. No, no, they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they curb stomped her. I mean, it was yeah. hilarious because I'm watching this and I'm just thinking, like, like, fight back, fight back, fight back, and it's like it's the funniest goddamn thing. Uh, it was so, it was so cool. I was like, yeah, that's that, that lady. I was like, get it, ladies, kick her. Yeah. And then, and then she gets, she, she, and, and then she gets, she gets a knife in the eye from Becca, and uh, mm -hmm. and like, yeah. it's it's her, it, it's Becca, her and Butcher and Ryan. And then, like Ryan, like looked at something he hated when he starts killing uh, killing his mom, and fa just fried that Nazi. It's like, it's it, it's great seeing uh, these these group of like it's not just not just ordinary people, but just like good people that are have this monumental. Again, the the the, the, okay. the seven appear to be unstoppable, and it was just great to see so, like a, a, like a, this ragtag group of rebellion pull together and bring bring these the villains down. And we're still okay, waiting so, on Homelander, of course, but you know. So we um. Well, yeah, okay. just, and that's the thing too. Like, like um, like I thought, like, like, like in terms of bringing these people down, season one, I found like you know I feel like he never really Huey never really got a get chance to kill A Train for what he did, but what he did was kind of good enough. It's like when he tried to go and kill his dad, he had the female waiting and wait, waiting away. It's like it was like, you were dumb enough to come over here and you think I wouldn't kill it. And she comes out and just cracks him right. Like yeah, that would be really stupid of me if I did that. And I mean, he basically fucked with his life so bad that he gave him a heart attack. And and as bloodthirsty as I am, is like, okay, well, you killed him, you did it. And it's like, but Huey's like, he's moving past revenge. He's got to. And even Starlight's yeah. like, he's just gonna try to kill you later. And it's just like, but he they saved his life, and it's like they gave him a second chance. Um, so he kind of feels like he he got that revenge that he needed. Um, yeah, he, we, he we, his, we keep he avoiding Butcher. Daughter. Keep avoiding Butcher. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. I was, I was trying to get to it, but you kept cutting me off because sure. I was saying since you brought up Ryan, yeah, who is the son of Homelander and Becca, which is Butcher's wife. And yeah, I'm talking about Butcher. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, you want me? I mean, he, you want me to go? Okay. Um. All right. <laughs> he's amazing. No. I mean, what do you, what do you want me to say? I mean, 
Carl Urban just kills that role. Carl Urban does kill that role. It's just like, um, he's so badass. It's like, I, again, yes. again, again, it, it, it feels like, it feels like it's just, it's, it's Garth Ennis's id on the screen. It's just, it's just, it's this, this it drunken, angry British man, um, who, mm-hmm. who's just like, like, fuck you, wank up, fuck you, and just like, angry at the world. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Kratos. It reminds me of God of War. It's like the Greek gods fucked with everybody in their myths, and then they fucked with the wrong fucking Spartan. You know, ha, 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 yeah. We're the Greek gods; we can get away with you. Fucked me. What are you gonna do about it? You gonna like you can't touch us? We'll curse you and just like yeah. Ah, hi Zeus. Here's your head. It's like it's, it's like, yeah. and he's just he's so determined to get justice for his wife. Um, and he, mm-hmm. he's like, I, I feel like in many ways he's 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 the heart of the team because um, they all have lost something. They've all seen the superheroes hurt people. Um, mm-hmm. He brings Huey in on that, on that regard. Um, everyone, he's, he's, he's seen this horrible thing happen to someone he cares about, and he doesn't care. He doesn't care how powerful the superheroes are. He doesn't care about how Void is. It's like, no, I'm going to fight this. And I think it's, it can be summed up in the like superhero victims anonymous point. They bring the writer in. The writer who lost his dick when he had sex with the ice lady. You know, and it's just like, and it was like, I guess that's the price I pay for having the chance to make love to a goddess. And it's like you're all, but you're all pathetic. Where's like, you like, do you think you think that you th- like that uh, that 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 super strong guy gives a shit about breaking your spine? You think she, that she gives a shit about breaking your dick off? Where's your sense of decency? Where's your sense of pride? You've been wrong. You should be angry. Why aren't you angry? And it, mm-hmm. it's like he, he it, it's very Punisher. It, it's like like he, it doesn't matter how powerful these people are. They don't have a right to hurt people. And if no, it he's takes, not. If I got if I got if I got to fucking like throw my life away to to bring these people to justice, that's what I'm gonna do. But I'm, I'm gonna be smart about it. And it, it, it it's like it's like he can't kill Homelander, but he'll take whatever he can get. He'll ruin his career. He'll destroy his reputation. He'll make allies with even people he doesn't like, like other superheroes. And it all like like Butch like he he, he like he's always like he never gets his chance. Like he he's you always see him with like a gun. But again, you can't really even shoot these fuckers. Like the fight with um. Black Noir. He beats Black Noir by bullshitting him into uh, bullshitting Egbert, who's watching, and they're like, I'll, I'll upload this to the cloud and you'll all be fucked. It just, any little intelligence, brawn, whatever he can use, whatever resource he used to bring these yeah. people down, and he's doing it, and it's taking his time. Like, these people are invincible. They're gods among us, but they're starting to splinter a little bit. If Huey can basically make the speedster have a heart attack, over this guy mm-hmm. ruining his life, it, it shows that the, the this evil can be brought down. And yeah. you know, it, it, it's like, it, and um, I guess it's the best way to sum up Butcher. Um, but I, I really feel for him. It, it's just like he's just like you have that that Christmas episode where they flashback. He's just like he's a, he's a Fed. He's an FBI agent with his wife, just you know, like you know, and they're they're happy. And then it's like, and then you see him later of, of what's. I was really happy he found her. I was really happy yeah. they were able to get back together uh, with each other because I think that was another change from the comics. Um, well, again, yeah, the, the, the identity of the rapist is very different in the comics because it's. Well, I mean, in the in the, in the yeah in the comic, um, she didn't survive. Right. You know the thing. The, 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 the story thing, that like um, the scientist tells Homelander actually happened in the comic, whereas in this version she lived. And they basically the the creators of the show were like, we just thought it'd be a it'd be a nice kick in the nuts. Yeah. That uh, she's alive. And she has his kid. Yeah. And yes, she still hates Homelander. Yeah. She loves her son. And there's yeah. no reason for her not to love her son and try to raise him. And her son's and, a good kid. It is like I I I, I felt like. I mean, he's gonna need therapy. Well, and, for and obvious thing, it's, it's like like home like like Butcher like has this racism towards all supers, which you look at yeah. the seven, it's totally justified. But wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I want to add on that too. Here's what's something that's so cool because I, I mean we've we've seen this in, in, in great fiction anyway, where you have this whole uh, two sides of the same coin. Because to me, as much as I love the butcher and I'm on his side most of the time, I feel like his vengeance gets the better of him and yes he gets he's very prejudiced towards supers. Rightfully so. But so much so that he's it's almost like he won't and he wouldn't he didn't want to touch the kid at all. Yeah. He wouldn't give it a chance. It reminds me of Homelander. It reminds me of of Homelander. Yeah. Well, Homelander sees everyone as ants. Yeah. And I understand why. Again, 
but really quickly, what makes a good villain uh, uh, evil Superman is basically how you raise Superman. Right. The reason Superman is the way he is is because of the good parentage right. that he got here on Earth. If it was if it was shitty parents, cold government, whatever, yeah, something like this is exactly what would happen. And meanwhile, Homelander, well, you know, he had to, he was in, he was in the crib next to Goku, who just kept crying all the time, and that's how. No, seriously, like, I feel like Homelander's <laughs> origin story is like that's how you fix Brawley's origin story. It was like, oh, Goku just wouldn't shut up, so I'm crazy now. It's like, okay, it's the same thing they were going for with Brawly, but I think it's better done with Homelander. <laughs> you haven't seen you haven't seen the Dragon Ball Super I haven't Broly seen the new the new origin of Brawly. I think they they're like they may have fixed it. It's, it's way better. Yeah. Way better. Um but what's cool about that movie is simply that um Akira Toriyama I like to think he pulled a knee yeah. where he saw the stuff that worked yeah. and just took Oh, they didn't, and just okay, I, I fixed this, it's done. Yeah. Um, I'm still gonna be Vegeta from the abridged version of the first Brawly movie, it's like, you don't understand, he's so awesome, but so stupid, it doesn't, it's because Kakarot was crying, that's why he's impossible, it doesn't make sense, Piccolo, it's like, snap out of it! <laughs> the abridged version goes, oh, he's, he's so cool, <laughs> but that's so dumb, <laughs> so cool! <laughs> Oh, like the, ori- the original movie, he's like, Piccolo, you don't understand. He's a super sanded like gods. There's nothing we can do in this verse. He's so cool. But he's so dumb, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that's, uh, exactly. It, but it's, uh, that's, and that's, that's me. That's my spirit animal right yeah. there. I was like, Lanny, I remember Lanny watching... Batour's I remember... Vegeta, Lanny Batour's Vegeta is your spirit animal. <laughs> yeah. He's my spirit animal because that was exactly... The, you, you were there. You were at my house when I rented that from Blockbuster. And I was like... We finally, I finally saw, I had so much hype about this Bowie. Finally saw it and went, he is so cool. You, and so dumb. You just <laughs> don't have appreciation for early 19th century psychology, psychological experiments. That, that's what it boils down to. It's like, that would totally happen. You know, if we had Zans and we, we did some of the fucked up, like, psychological experiments we did with monkeys on them, we'd have a Brawly. Mm-hmm. You just can't handle it, Josh. You just can't handle it. You, you, you think that's somehow a letdown. Whatever. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Cause I really gotta go. Um, um let, let's talk about the guy who um who cuts his limbs off for S and M sex and cut his dick off. Let's talk about that. No, and we're done. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we could, but that's not much to say anyway. But um, another hundred bucks, you can cut my dick off. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Oh, I yeah, I just remember what we, we we haven't talked about is Elizabeth Shue, Mallory Stillwell, um, who um, was fresh in my mind because Cobra Kai, because uh, because Allie's back, yeah. Allie Allie's All right. back, and she she got she got Johnny his 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 heart back, and everything's good, and she's a major character in this in, in season one. Now, again, she's another gender swap. She was a dude in um, the comics, yeah. and. Um, yeah. She's great. She's delightfully charming and slimy. Uh, I mean, it's Elizabeth Shue. I, I, she's, she, you know, you, she's always good. You know what? Um, but thank oh God, you. that, uh, no, that thank that, you for that, that. that. The relationship with her and Homelander, it's like, oh God, what the? Oh, it's so creepy. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, I know. So this. And then he kills he, her. He's, he's sleeping with doppelganger. He's having. Yeah. Uh, no. I know, I know, like, I know, okay. I know. Well, actually, you know, let's talk about Doppelganger. Doppelganger is the ultimate male answer to Mystique. Oh, man, Mystique's so yeah. fucking hot. She can shapeshift anything. She could even be a dude. Okay, well, how about Doppelganger? It's a fat gay man who could be any hot chick you want. And it's like, like, oh, oh you're having, you like this pussy? You like this pussy? I have a fat gay man! A fat gay man, you're gay! Gotcha! <laughs> it's the ultimate prank. Yeah, yeah with, with, um, well, the cool thing is that, um... With shapeshifters like that, like if you can shapeshift yeah. like that, yeah. to me, any character like that is because I, I can imagine myself as that kind of person. You're instantly by. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're instantly by. We talked about this. We talked about Lord of uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. All this, like, oh, they're gonna make they're gonna make Loki gender yeah. fluid. It's like he's a fucking shapeshifter. 
He, yeah. He, he because goes into an animals and fucks animals, and that's how we got Cerberus. That's how we got the yeah, world serpent. Was... That's how we got Odin's fucking horse. It's Loki's kid. Read a book and shut the fuck up. But, but I'm saying that... Uh, Make your ass fast, you're you're man. But let's say, let's say you don't turn to animals. Let's say you just shake your thing between genders. Yeah. You are becoming that gender. And you get all the f- you, you, you literally are you know what I say. It's like my um, favorite episode of Farscape when 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 Crichton got stuck in, in, in uh, Aaron's body, and he's like, oh, "Come on, I'm yeah, a cop. But, I dream about something." Yeah, but that's, <laughs> yeah, but that's time. what I'm saying is that if he had been stuck in her body forever, yeah, he would have been fine with the concept of being with you. Maybe you understand. Maybe and it would have and it would have it, 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 it's something that he would have to adjust. Yeah, but when you're gonna shake it like this. You, that, that, that old saying of, oh, you haven't you have walked a mile in my shoe, you really are, because your genetic can change completely. Right. From XX, XY to XX comes on the road back and forth. And it's like, you know what? Whatever, man. Yeah. Who cares? And so, if that's the case, it's like, so, so any character in fiction who's, who transforms like that, and if you're going to tell me that they're not. I mean, I'll take bi as the least, because you're basically pansexual. I mean, you're just, it's, it's like, but, I mean, but it's but it's in the best way, too, because at no point. You're literally exactly gender how, fluid in that, folks. Like, they talk about gender fluidity. It's like, hey, I, I literally can turn into a chick and back to a dude again. I'm literally gender fluid. It's like. And to, and to me, it's like, it's the best way to represent it for. Our, our, our normal non superpower world, like like a, a metaphor, a metaphor for it. It's a perfect no, it's a perfect yeah. metaphor because it allows you to see it as not an other or something ugly or scary or unknown. I but know, we're having a no. really deep conversation about doppelganger. I wasn't, I was going to be a joke, but it was like this. Yeah, there's a lot to pull from this. Yes. Well, this, <laughs> well, this is what I want, bro. This is what yeah. we. This is what I want. I'm hoping for this is yeah. because I'm comics and it comics are deep to me. It's not just. Uh, you know, pretty pictures on a page. Yeah. Yes, there's comics that are just pretty for prettiness, and yes, there's comics that you know they're trying to they're trying too hard to push an angle without without actually being nuanced about it. Yeah. Because life, unfortunately, is not is not simple. It's not cut and dry one or the other. It is nuanced. There is gray, and and thus you need to tell a story, convey a message. That fits in all those areas, even if it's uncomfortable while it's navigating every nook and cranny. Right. Because if you're watching the boys and you're not feeling uncomfortable, then I don't know what to say. There's something you you should not you should like certain things, but you should be like, oh. Okay. Every time Homelander was drinking like Elizabeth Shoe's breast milk. Every time. I just, now. Ah! And by the way. Yeah. Because you were off camera, you and I talked about. Um, this with Luke Skywalker and the and the milk. This is the reason why that milk doesn't bother me anymore because I saw this first, and then I saw the Last Jedi. I'm like, you know what? I can take green milk any day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me, give me, give me, give, give me the Mer Camel again. I'll take, I'll drink the Mer Camel milk. I just, oh. Because oh, it's a, it's an, and, it's and an by animal. The way, and by the way, by the way, Elizabeth Shue is like gorgeous and like like she's an older actress it's like i very much a milf i i i'm like i'm like yeah absolutely but maybe it's just not my thing but like 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 no that's for babies that's, that's because, no, no thank you I mean, bro bro the reason why it's not a it shouldn't be a thing is because it has too much edible complex shit but, to but it. it goes in it goes into how fucked up homelander is Homelander grew yeah. up with, with no love and affection. No so, love. Like, the only woman for him, at least at the time, was basically his mom. Yeah. It's that hard-to-quantify it relationship that Mallory pointed out. It's yeah, a lover comic, and a mother. In the comic, his relationship with, with the... Because it's a guy. Yeah. But it is very much like... It's, just, it's creepy still. Yeah. You know, there's moments where it's like, Come here, son. And he sits on. He puts his head on his lap still, and he plays it like a son, but like a child. And it's really creepy because they're two grown men. Yeah. And and you can tell that the 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 the, 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 the guy is like going through the motions because he's like, I have to, you know, patronize this this god. Yeah. Essentially, I'm not really getting much out of this other than the fact that I'm controlling him. Yeah. 
We need to do this. And she's doing the same thing, too, in the show. Home, Homelander is a victim that's become a monster, basically. He was a child. Exactly. Abused and that's, and and that's again, it's, it's exactly what I said before. It's like, that is how... That is exactly what happens when you take the Superman story and you turn it on his head. Where is he brought up? Yeah. How was he raised? That determines everything about it. Yeah. And 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 the way he's raised, it's not. It's completely understandable why he's a he's a petulant man child who self absorbed, impatient, demands everything, yeah. and feels like he can do whatever he wants because he's been told that. Yeah. Plus, he has the power to do it. Yeah. So when he doesn't get his way and he has a freaking tantrum, yeah. it's not just a tantrum. It's going to light a city of, you know, on fire. I, I, think, I, think, I think Mike Slavasa talked about this. Like he, he, This is his like direct reaction, and I felt the same thing. When he's arguing with the protesters, uh, when he mm-hmm. comes down and he deals with the protesters, and they're calling him, and like the, the black soldiers like, you don't represent us. And people are calling mm-hmm. him out, and then all of a sudden you see him heat vision the guy. And he just, like, heat yeah. vision... We've already seen him murder a whole plane full of people. We've already seen this, like, this guy's a death yeah. machine. And then he just kills mm-hmm. 100 people, and then he snaps out of it. And I'm like... <sighs> it was like... It was like... I, I, I was just, like, like shaking. I was like, oh, my God. It, it was like... Because, like, like, it was... I, I was like... He's a time bomb. He's just a time bomb waiting to go off. Um, yeah. You know... I thought about that with the... I thought about that, too. When I saw that scene, I was like, he is a time bomb. Yeah. He just, he's just... He's really in the book. Yeah. Um... I, I, I want to reiterate, <laughs> reiterate how again much I love Garth Ennis in the comic book industry. Again, as a person who likes superheroes, I like people looking at it from a different angle. I like a deconstruction oh, of a superhero. Um, yeah. Something on that note. The thing is, because I love Garth Ennis too, what it is is that I myself got a little tired because there was a moment in time when the voice came out that he was satirizing and really sticking at superheroes, like like DC type yeah. superheroes, a lot. Uh, making jokes like, you know, the Batman and Robin are gay, and um, that Superman is sexually repressed, mm-hmm. and, you know, Green Lantern's an idiot, and things like that. And it's like, it's like, I get the jokes and stuff, but it was happening so often yeah. that it was kind of like, well, why are you even in this meeting? Right. Like, you couldn't do comics, because he would do other comics that have nothing to do with superheroes. Oh, I will insist on going into the superhero genre then if you really dislike them. And the truth is that it's not that he dislikes them. He dislikes certain ideas. Right. And I think a lot of it's like when he's, he was satirizing a lot of the old-fashioned ideas about them. Yeah. Not necessarily what they are today or they were at the time or where they could be. Yeah. But it is, it, it's different. It's about that. It's like, I, I like them, but it's like it's, it's, it's willing to, to shake the hornet's ass. Right. I think what, 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 what's at the core is, um, in terms of what the, the superheroes are, kind of like paragons. They're 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 like they're the modern mythology, and they represent the values of whatever culture they're in or what what era, era they're in. So, a lot of like when we when you have a superhero like Superman, Superman is like everything good about humanity in many regards. He's all mm-hmm. of, and so it's like core to the characters that he's a good person. Spider Man and yeah. the X Men, it's like they're 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 not perfect, but they're they're still good people doing the best they can. And and that's all well and good. But if you're playing with it if, if you were to take all this into reality, if you had a world where we had Kryptonians and we had superpowers and things like that, how do humans mm-hmm. act? Pretty shitty to each other. And mm-hmm. it, it's it's kinda like what Baron Zemo said in Falcon the Winter Soldier. It's like is Steve Rogers like well yeah, like Steve wasn't like that, and how many Steve Rogers are, are, are out there? It's like if you had people like this with no oversight, and 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 they're people, they're flawed, but when they like they could be dangerous, they could have a tantrum, and it's a great way of showing it that basically it's like these these you know, this is what would happen. Yeah. Like you have like you had a corporation, if you had people like the Justice League, but they didn't, they weren't good people. The DC universe is very fortunate that they have yeah. people that are decent people that are doing that. But it's like you know it yeah like like a group. Like uh, the seven are, um, would uh, they have this promotion that they're these great guys? But like when you actually get to know them, they're a bunch of fuckheads, and they're but they're dangerous. So um, you know, it, it's like so. I, I, I think it shines true. It, it's it was it, it was really good. I was very it was very easy for me to binge. I couldn't put it down. I was like just every plot development. I liked all the characters. Especially, 
again, like the boys themselves are very, very likable, and and you, you're rooting yeah. for them. You got their back. Starlight's really, really likable. You're rooting for her. Um, Maeve, I feel like started off as like when you don't really know her, she's like, oh, she's just one of them. She's 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 an awful yeah. boy too, and then then you start feeling for her. you start feeling that like like yeah no she's she's a she she <laughs> regrets things she has done but she's a prisoner here um yeah i saw yeah. i saw glimmers of hope when she when she was witness to the whole plane thing yeah you know, she's on the plane yeah and you see it's 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 probably but the problem is she's in so deep that she ends yeah. up she's part of it she's, she's an accomplice to that yeah, she, yeah exactly so she's she makes you know, one foot Forward and two steps back. One step forward and step, and so it was very. Uh, what happens at the end of season two with her character yeah. specifically was so satisfying. It's so satisfying. It's so satisfying that she basically joins yeah. a good guy. She beats yeah. up a Nazi. Yeah, I'm like, come on, man, and you're so close. She fucks Homelander harder than anybody because it's like it's the one thing he cares about yeah. is people loving him. And it's like I will make sure yep. no one loves you ever again. That's you. And it's yeah, yeah. And, and and it it just boils down to him just. All he can do is jack off on top of a tower. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> they beat him. Yeah, that's they right. Like I'm, st- now I'm still waiting for him to like get horribly ripped apart and fucked over in some awesome way. Like they're probably gonna do eventually. Um, if, I, if I recall in the comics, he's brutally murdered by Black Noir, who in that version, again we're at spoilers anyway. In that version, he's the actual person that raped uh, Becca. Um, and he's actually a clone of Homelander uh, that yeah. was meant to kill him if he ever gets out of line. And he actually orchestrated all this. I think he, he basically orchestrated Butcher's mission. He, he raped Becca specifically to set Butcher yeah. after him so it would fuck up Homelander's life and he would go rogue so that he could then kill him. And so... Um, I'm not... Yeah. The thing is, I'm not sure what they're doing because we're Black Noir in the show. Black Noir is different in the show. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I, it doesn't seem like it's it's hung on at all. I it's mean, not, they, it's they, still yeah, it's a black guy who's allergic yeah. to nuts. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay, because I haven't, I don't remember seeing his face. That's why. Yeah, I well, like, he, there's a brief uh, glimmer. It's like yeah, it's you know, he, he, yeah, like, okay. Black Noir is supposed to be totally different in this one. He's still got complex okay. powers. He's got superhuman strength and whatnot. But it's like it, like in this one, it's like he's like he's basically well, also he's weird. You know, he drinks tea and he's like. We saw him crying when he found out about how all his powers weren't from birth; they were from the bee. So he, he's very—he's fairly enigmatic. But I, from what I can tell with him, the main thing with him is he's basically Egbert's personal assassin. And that was one yes. thing I really liked too: is like a lot of the characters, like, like individual, like individual fights with members of the Seven, um, like Translucent, like early on in the beginning. It, it's like they, it's like they, they, they have these. Like you had all this intrigue. You have some characters yeah. like get redeemed or start redeeming themselves but then you have just like one member who no this character's a bastard and you have a fight and like 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 black noir was just an antagonist they had to get through um and um yeah i, re- I really i also i really like the death of translucent i really like yeah i just c4 up the ass but doom so <laughs> yeah that was really cool um yeah. anyway i don't know i personally have to get going i would i could talk about the show yeah forever and i have to go to work soon so so um josh what are we talking about next week when is next week should we be doing this on sunday or are we doing this on wednesday from now on no we're gonna have to be doing this on sundays okay all right um if you can you you let me know um what um i didn't i didn't put it out there for the world to say but some kind of switching jobs for a little bit and leaving a bad job to a good job so but the good job is very accommodating so i think i'll be all right so i think we can make it all right. Um, as for what to talk about next week, if you have a chance, my other recommendation is Invincible. Ah, excellent. Everyone, everyone is talking about that because it ended not too long ago. Uh, it was it's only one season. It's only eight episodes. Ooh. The episodes are shorter than um, than the episodes of The Boys, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean anything. Like because. All I'm saying is, like, when you watch one episode, because I think each episode's close to 30 minutes or whatever, right. sometimes it's a little un- a little over, it doesn't matter. There's so much content in every episode that it feels like a goddamn movie. Nice. Uh, it's brilliantly animated. I 
I would love to talk to you about the show. And I really want to have a... When we're done talking about the show itself, Yeah. I want to have a comparison with Homelander and Omni-Man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Omni-Man's a better that, person. I'll say that right off the bat. At least in the comics. Because yeah, Invincible, you got me into the comics as well. You show you, you we, we read the comics together. And so I'm already, uh, I'm already, I'm, I'm already prepped for a lot of the stuff that goes on in Invincible. Um, yeah, and my buddy, my buddy from work, Carla, is, uh, just saw it, and she was like, like wanted me to watch it too. So it's like, well, yeah, uh, it was like it, it was this or Preacher is what I was gonna vote for. Because I need to get close. It's, it's, it's a great show, um, and I've been on the, I've been on the comment section because I've been, there's been several uh, nerdcore uh, songs based on characters. Yeah, on Invincible, like. Uh, Omni Man admit to himself, yeah. and I think I, I was on on one of them saying, I, you know, this is really cool that people like this because a lot of people are into the show but they don't know about the comic as much. I go, wow, if they really, if they love this this season, they have no idea what's coming. I mean, there's a second it, season for. Are we talking about the boys? Are we talking about uh, Invincible? Invincible, Invincible, Invincible. So Invincible has a second season. season coming out. Invincible got greenlit for season two and three. Nice. Okay. Because not only was it extreme, no, when it first came out, but the thing is, unlike the boys, they dropped Invincible one season, I mean, one episode a week. So every Friday there was a new episode. Yeah. They were just they were pulling that Mandalorian. Basically. Right. And the, the 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 streaming from it was just like I mean not ratings anymore, but anyway, the point is numbers. What I feel. And Amazon, I think after what three episodes, was like, "Okay, we're going to give you both the next two seasons because it also takes a lot of anime." Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I was like, "Just go." Anyway, um, we need to sign off. Yeah, yeah, I gotta go. And uh, but yeah, good, good, good talk. All right, Invincible, it is. That's what we're gonna do. See you next Sunday. And I'm gonna cut the recording here because there's a little bit of gossip I want to talk to you about uh, before we go. But um, yeah, good show. J join us next week if you like the show. Mm -hmm. Like, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm the Dread Pirate. Signing off. This is Star Killer. Uh, Check out the boys. Bye. It's dope. And we'll see you next week. And we'll talk about Invincible. Bye. Bye. And I, I, I cut away before you could you could salute. I'm sorry.